Welcome back. This is part 11 of our galactic history. I'm Lance White with Andrew Partsis. And um, one of the things that uh, came up for me during the break was the, uh, the numerous wars. Are those being planned out as part of the final chess moves or are some of that unexpected? The wars that are going on right now around the world, um, what's the what's the game plan with that there are unexpected things happen For example the fruit vendor in tunisia huh. he was an unexpected wave of rebellion totally against the the entire system that was looking at our data and predicting us to do this 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 or this the the guy in tunisia he was a fruit vendor who said he had to pay taxes or pay have some kind of license and he set himself on fire in the scare in the square which set off a whirlwind of stuff in Tunisia, Egypt, Afghanistan, all, all over the Middle East, up into Syria. But that one fruit vendor, what was being protested was was uh, actually food issues. The price mm -hmm. of food had tripled. Oh, the price mm -hmm. of olive oil had gone through the roof, and that's the staple of the staple for them. Yeah. The same thing in Egypt. Egypt was about the price of food. Mm. Okay, That's how out of touch they were they had raised the price of food so much so people could no longer eat that were in middle income jobs which is happening here in america yes <clears throat> in fact it's happening very rapidly mm -hmm. well, they're trying to take our water away from us and make it pay for it too oh, right they've already yeah. taken the air mm -hmm. <laughs> as for the, the the wars we see tunisia tunisia fell as tunisia was raising the main controller forces looked at this and said this is gonna this is gonna suck for us <laughs> we have to do something quick so they divested all of their assets out of iraq and afghanistan and put them in tunisia so that they could co-op any rebellion move that was going to go because they knew it was going to spread it goes to egypt in the beginning and then you have the green movement in iran egypt was still a little blip on the radar in tahir square they'd only been there like six or seven days Oh. And then you have what's going on in the Green Revolution. The Green Revolution would be the two months before, would be before Christmas. Okay. The Green Revolution, they're in their, their run up to their election. Millions are out. They pull out the guns. They start killing people in the street. It's live on TV. So mm. that tells you that the government is going to put suppress rebellion. Right. That's the media outlook. This was actually shown here for a reason. Think of how many of the wars aren't shown to us. The war oh. in Turkey and Syria is going on now. Do they show that any day at all? No, no, no. But they showed the Green Revolution, the people getting killed in the streets for a reason. Was that to turn us against Iraq? That was fear. Ah, well, to of create course fear. Right. Course they are already divested all their forces out of Iraq. They realized they already lost. Now the tribes want them. Oh. They want them there, and they wanted prosecutions for their war criminals oh. on the American side. Plus oh. all the corruption and the fact that four and a half trillion dollars is missing from reconstruction <laughs> what else is new on that the bribery went to the highest levels there ah. so iraq iraq was divested because they got all the technology they wanted out from under the ground there's mm. all sorts of technology that they need afghanistan is a little different there are actually vessels embedded in the mountains other mm -hmm. out of phase in the mountains that have been there for millions of years and they're extremely valid, valuable vessels on the black market Mm. very valuable or the technology in them is so intense that it can increase the power of one faction a, a lot wow and so do they know where these uh, I, you have to go search for them literally it's like quite quite on a low low scale level you have to be like actual psychic people in the spot to understand how to pull the vessel out because the, the vessel has a, a limited consciousness in it huh Interesting, and uh, there must be numerous places in Egypt and devices all that are... All throughout the whole world. Well, right. Yes. All throughout the whole world. Right, right. So they, the, the dark hasn't discovered all these items. Nor has the light. Nor has the light. Okay. But people purposely left those there so the future people would find them. Right, like the Dead Sea Scrolls, for instance? Correct. Okay, and uh, what was Area 51 about? Was that... Area 51 is where the time travel missions needed an anchor location so that they can go and get missions any time they were in the time stream. So let's say you got put back 30 years. Okay. If you, you needed an update and didn't want to communicate to anything but something that has connection to the timeline you came from, you'd go to Area 51 
with a special passcode which would take you to the time travel division. <laughs> wow. What else exists there? Everything we talked about. Right. All, I mean, because all these technologies all these are, are all... Yeah. But at the same time, a lot of their technologies were, have been removed. They figured out a way how to get past their suppression fields and just teleport all the technology they wanted out. Where to where? The good guys took it out. Oh, it, oh, oh, I got, I got it. So, mm -hmm. so in other words, the, the toys of the big boys are, are being... Taken away. Taken away. Israel has been hurt pretty bad that way. Okay. Much of their multidimensional technology has been completely incapacitated. Ah. They still have tricks up their sleeve, but the stuff they expected to have until the end isn't there. Oh. Think of both knights and all your pawns are gone. Okay. That's the moon, that's that's where where Israel is right now. Wow, it does feel like they're on their last legs. You never know. But you know, right? You never and know. They all reinvent Honestly, themselves. They reinvent themselves. They come back somehow. They mm -hmm. come up with a new, or they have an ace in the sleeve. Exactly. You know, and, and or a gun in their sleeve. <laughs> too many of those. Exactly. Um, so the Syrian war. Yeah, yeah. What about that? All the wars that exist right now, on our planet, are meant to suppress the chakra energy that's below it. Oh. There are a cluster of womb chakras all throughout the Middle East, called the Garden of Eden at one point in the Bible. Mm. With what it meant is there could be thousands of local realities within that zone that were all birthing new life that could be transported to a new blank Akashic record planet. Mm -hmm. It was life that was meant to rapidly be created and then sent somewhere else. Mm. What's happening there now is war, so every time someone dies, they're instantly recycled back into the system of war. So you could die once and all of a sudden be forced to be a walk-in on somebody else who's dying. Whew, that right. could get to pretty tiring. And that, that, is, that is what's suppressing the energy of the chakras okay. from waking up. Those will be, these will be the first sets of chakras that wake up and begin to change the people on that, in that area. And that's why there's war there. And that's why the rebellion started with a fruit vendor, because that was the first opening of the collection of those chakras. Hmm. So once that energy starts to circulate... The, it's, it seems like there's almost nothing that could stop it. Correct. Once a wild card is played. outside of the, the predictive models comes in. All the old models don't mean the same value. Right, and you, they can't keep up with them fast enough, no matter how much technology they have, Correct. to predict what's going to come next. Exactly. And so that kind of would level the, the playing field to some extent. It would put the neutrality people back in a place where they can create secrets that the light and the dark don't know about, uh, which can make the game play faster. Okay, all right. And once the game plays faster, you have to show more of your moves. Right, right. So the, the, the neutrality people uh, are the ones that really... Step on the gas pedal. You're right. And those, those are... The walk-ins. The walk-ins, okay. They're brought in by Prime Creator, his choice, because ah. he's scanned everyone that's on this planet right. and understands what what other service to universe entities are ready to step in and take the hardest job ever, right. which Could, is to take over the contracts of people at the controller levels right. to end a system of domination and control that's been going on in a 52 million year time war history. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And a 38,000 year suppressed uh, ascension right. cycle. Yeah. So, um, uh, I just lost my train of thought. Uh, we were talking about the, um, uh, the walk-ins. The walk-ins. So this, so that completely changes the, the whole, the whole game. Correct. The, because the walk-ins are the council of 12. Correct. And, and the management system. Management system, okay. And, and we the don't court know, system, the spiritual court system. Which is run by the Archons. Run by the Archons. And the Archons also manage what else? The control rooms. Ah. They have they have their puppetry energy over the control room people. Okay, okay. So they don't have to manage the control rooms directly. They manage the people in them. Correct. And then the people in the control rooms manage the people below them. Which are the bankers. Ah, okay. And then the next layer down below that. The bankers control the governments. Right. Okay. And then the governments run the strings of the thugs. Right, right. And then the mafia runs interference for all, all of them. them. Yeah. And the royals kind of hold the contracts so the system exists because there has to be contract holders for the system. Okay, right. So they're the they're the ones that hold the paper. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. They it's own you. the world <laughs> exactly. And then the Vatican holds the paper over the soul contracts. 
how uh, people are in the baptized situation. Now, the purpose of baptism is to keep the Put soul you in that contract of tacit consent forever. So, getting baptized is not necessarily a good thing. That's where they seal the spirit from. Yes, but at the same time, there are people that are healed from healed from healed from baptism. Uh. And it, this is again to get to religion. There are good people in religion. Right. Religion is hijacked, and there are bad people in religion. Thus, the pedophilia organizations. But there, for religion to be what it is, there has to be good in it. Otherwise, nobody would have ever bought it. But what's to what extent the is the highest and the highest levels have to are be government, which are separate of religion. Well, okay, all so right. The governing body of the of the the church, which is the Vatican, is a country that has people that have citizenships all over the world. So you'd see the duality of of the Vatican. It's a country that holds con the spiritual contracts of a religious and organization that's global. Mm and forcibly spreading and passively spreading mm -hmm. versus other religions that are forcibly and passively spreading also. Okay, like the Mormons. The Mormons, the Buddhists. But, so right, 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 any all, of them. They're all, yeah, promoted. Any religion is... They're all promoted. Yeah, promoted, yeah. So there's no, there's no one better than another. Um, and then that brings us to the sacred texts that you said were all basically holographic documents. That, yep. And um, co-opted after or before... Written. Right, it would have to because be. it's about passing the generations and allowing the generation to reinterpret based off of the predictive right. models they have. And if something goes wrong, they can fix it the next generation right. and print it the way they want it. Right, they just put the, right. the, the eleventh printing or whatever, or they right. just uh, erase it, erase it, erase it, and then you don't even know that what you're holding is a different version mm -hmm. because the, the old one doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Now, what about a uh, physical, gee, there's a lot of controversy about Jesus in his life and what he did and who he was and so on and so forth. Now, as I understand it, everything that manifests in the, at the metaphoric level has to also, or as above, ha also has to exist as below. So there has to be a physical manifestation of 12 disciples or 12 people, whether they're, you know, literal or not, and there has to be somebody that incarnates as a being that it represents in many people have felt that they are that particular being, and that has to do with the God program. God programming, or you at one point were a sovereign piece of that entity ah, right. that chose to become part of Earth consciousness instead of taking on a body or going to the astral world. Uh. It went total to service to Earth, and it's allowing its name and imagery of that other lifetime <clears throat> to go through time. And then there will be future people that will look at that energy and recognize that at one point I was 25 degrees of separation, that person. Okay. 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 But you're not really that person. Right. Okay? right. It's like right. saying my great-grandfather times 52, that I lived one life in time next to is, my, is, is me, but they're not. Right. Their, their energy is so powerful that it goes through the bloodlines. Right. And now, uh, what do we, what do, can we find out about the actual person that lived and, and mm. those, you know... He was a real person. Okay. Um, I mean, the trivial stuff in the Bible, and then there's the more expansive stuff in the Bible. He wasn't on the cross. Okay, right. He I've always, wasn't on the cross. I've always thought that. Um, trying to be a little delicate, but I know some of the audience out there is really connected to, to some of these concepts. Yeah. Um, he wasn't tortured. Right. Okay. He was betrayed, but not in the way that the Bible was, was stated. Okay. His betrayal was by other light beings, actually. Really? Other light beings who didn't want to see the bastardization of the teachings. Okay. So they said, you got to go. Huh. You got to go. So would We're they be screwing up our system of light while the dark was still trying to win. So they they said Jesus had to go. They made sure that it was not the right time for him to stay. Oh, interesting, interesting. The light forces are not unified. Oh, right. Uh, that's, that's pretty clear. Make that clear. They are not that's unified. That's pretty clear. You can see that in the uh, New Age movement, and right. of course that's all been co-opted in the light worker. Uh, you Correct. Know, the fragment. Jesus was a real being that traveled right. the world and also traveled the stars. 
Okay, uh, some say he went to Egypt for a lot of his esoteric training. And in the Himalayas, and Japan, oh, nice. and Australia, wow. and Native America, wow. Mesoamerica, yes. South America, Asia, all over. So he was able to travel anywhere. He used the Hollow Earth or Garth and Tube Networks. Interesting, interesting. Did he, in his journeys... There were many mystics in throughout the Middle East that knew how to use the tunnels. Okay. Okay. As okay. well as those in the Vatican, because there's Vatican-based tunnels also. Oh, right. And then there are maglev trains underneath. These are consciousness trains. Right? Oh, okay. There are, ma are maglev trains, too, but this, these are actually tunnels that once you start traveling, you go into no time. And if you're going from one country to another, it can take a, a day instead of months. Okay. Okay, good. Um, so... Um, he was also big in Ireland too. He did a lot. Jesus did a lot of work in Ireland too. I've heard that the Ar Ireland is the center or the source of of much of the, uh, uh, of much of what has come out spiritually that has been repressed. Yes, because there was a massive DNA. <clears throat> how do I put this? Bank, that was there. It was the crystals that held the wisdom of all the DNA, separate of the, of the wisdom of the domination and control. Oh, okay. The free Earth system had powerful connections in the base fam soul family, so people were able to transmit codes, the soul codes that I've been talking about, to these these basically off-the-record recordings oh. so that someone would have access to it in the future. Okay. Jesus was able to help organize that. Wow. Because there were individual families that had individual parts, and when he came there as his teacher, he began healing people in unity. As began people in unity, they all break and brand their crystal to the to the table. Oh. And that's ultimately why the Vatican was very harmful to the Irish people. Oh. Because it was looking for those people that held those objects so that they could erase them or bring them back into the Vatican. And, and they did accomplish that. Correct. Uh, Veronica Keane talks a lot about that. Did you... Have, I've interviewed Veronica, you, yes. She's, isn't she a wonderful, wonderful person? Wonderful, wonderful. And I love her uh, channeling of Montague. Yes. And another person... I just adore her Montague's words <laughs> to Veronica. And um, she's doing quite, quite a bit of wonderful work on the planet she's doing as well. Work. And Michael Tessarian is another one that's mm -hmm. come out with the uh, origins of uh, the Irish origins of uh, yes, yeah. And uh, uh, that's another wonderful source of, of information. Of course, this is this is uh, much easier to just tap into the Akashic records. <laughs> okay, so getting back to Jesus, um, so he was a basically. Was he one of the highest uh, light beings? Uh, no. Not necessarily. There are others of He's the one that got spun. Ah. <laughs> Let's think of political spin factor. Okay. He's, he was an ace. He was a, we'll just call it a royal flush that was played. Okay. And then somebody else played a royal flush on the spin game afterwards. Oh, yeah, this is what it feels like. Because he got co-opted. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He was there. He was real. He changed people locally for two generations. Fourteen generations later, it doesn't matter what he said or what he did. Right, right. Because they that's wrote four hundred years later. Yeah, and that's what um, an example of time manipulation. Correct. And also uh, uh, changing texts. Uh, uh, yeah. Changing translations. Uh, right for the next generations, which is uh, one of the tricks that uh, yep. one of many, many that's being played on us. <laughs> okay. Changing and, our history as they see fit. Right, right, exactly. And us never knowing it was changed because they took all our oral traditionists. Right, and we have no clue really about the uh, the star families that we come from because that is so suppressed. That information is really, uh, you know, that's been uh, uh, marginalized. Correct. So, uh, did Jesus ever have a relationship? Yes, and children. And children. Yes. What happened to the children? Uh, Broken into 32 family lineages spread among the kings and queens of, of Europe. That's okay. why they're contract, contract holders for the system of domination and control. Oh. And that's why his bloodline was so important to dominate. Oh. Because if any others did manifest within his bloodline, they wanted to make sure that there, the soul family that was in there was controlled. Right. Thus, right. that's why you have a queen now who's the sole contract holder for the monetary value system of exchange. Huh. That's what the Queen of England does. Wow. She holds all those soul contracts. Wow. Therefore, she has to be a powerful and old soul and has to go through a remembering process. So what's going to happen with the royal families as the shift increases? Well, when you start taking away the spin, people will be real angry at them. 
but at the same time, many of them had no choice. They're just born into a life holding contracts that they have well, no way of understanding. Did they have a choice of being born into these? Maybe a thousand lifetimes ago. Oh, right. <laughs> and like the rest of us, they too have had to keep replaying their roles over and over. And yeah. so some of those are probably pretty weary. Yes. Even though they have all the keys and right. to the toys and everything else. Yeah. And they're tired of they know they can never defeat the controllers they have they've lost hope inside themselves therefore just play the game ah right right um interesting so uh all right so all of his all of jesus lineages has been co-opted into the bloodlines no there's a couple bloodlines that are still in secret okay and the esoteric groups the um uh the various um Secret groups that are holding, you know, the Rosicrucians and the Masonics and so on and so forth, and all the uh, secret, uh, the skull and bones and the rest of it, are holding the tech, also holding the technology at the higher levels. And spirit contracts. And the spirit contracts. Right. So they have, they have to hold, they have to actually have beings that hold the contracts physical on Earth for the system to exist. The sy think of the system itself as ha holding contracts to millions of controllers. Wow. And for the system to exist, there actually has to be a physical being in the matrix holding all the contracts in unity with all the other contract holders for the system to actually exist on top of our incarnation grid, why it's hijacked. Ooh. So that's a lot of layers. Yes. And so once that's all removed, once the, basically once the matrix is no longer functioning as the matrix and the contracts are not null and void, mm -hmm. then we are free and sovereign Mm -hmm. And the incarnation and the incarnational process returns to an organic pro process through uh, Gaia Sophia. Correct. And there's a, a system of uh, courts, spiritual courts Spirit of equity, of, with uh, all your ancestors present, and the proper family lineage members as the judges, with Earth overseeing the judges through unity consciousness. Okay, that seems like a good plan to me. Mm -hmm. I'm all for it. <laughs> That's right. Me too. So. Um, so what do people do to hop on the bandwagon to accelerate this Reclaim process? Claim your sovereign free will. Right. So much about it. Nurturing yourself. I call that the hard work, nurturing yourself. Yeah. Nurturing yourself so that you can heal others or heal yourself or find yourself in an opportunity to expand and explore your own consciousness. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm the only galactic historian out there. We need more. <laughs> I'm talking to you guys out there. We need you to say yes. <laughs> Are, are you going to be able to teach others? Yes. At some point that will be made available. Okay. Um, the other two that still have their choice haven't been given their opportunity yet. Okay. But there are others that are have seen what I've done and uh -huh. are going to make their own version of it. Okay. Um, it'll come out and affect people within their soul family. They may not have the complete soul codes that I do, but I will complete enough for them that their understanding is there's many new soul families mm -hmm. in this in this system right now and then there's a graduating class that's going to come in with a totally different set of soul codes so they're working with the soul codes that are in the class that's about to come in mm -hmm. those are the people that would be you know three or four degrees of separation away from me where i have a complete soul code to what's living here now but i don't have the complete soul code to what's about to migrate in Ah, okay. So the two of us will cross over information-wise and soul code-wise, and then they'll be able to work in the astral world to complete the soul codes of everyone coming in. Ah. And then those who graduate, and we basically that's a cel time of celebration. Yep. Call it the kegger party. The kegger party, <laughs> thank God, we can drink again. You know, um, and uh, then that's when we're also able to to work with some of the spiritual technology that Correct. is has been available and that the galactics and clothing will be big clothing specialized clothing that amplifies your psychic energies oh never right that's a great idea i like that one i like that one that's a good one. what else um you'll have integrated artificial intelligence access so you can figure out how to make personal mental programs for yourself oh to get things accomplished okay um there won't be a monetary system, but everything will be overseen by the Earth's consciousness, so there will be no scam artists, no telemarketers. And no secrets. No secrets. So there won't be anybody pulling anything on anybody, and, and that will be a, 
permanent state. Correct. And then people will get to heal in that energy and be able to make extend circles of trust with other people that they never could have before because there was always the fear of the scam or the lie or <coughs> right. which was always <coughs> just, uh, seen their subconscious. Right. Right. Because and the system is so corrupt. <coughs> and all that all the fear programming goes away. Goes away. And it takes time to <coughs> heal. I've said this many times before. We're going to need a billion healers here. So, the, so those healers are us. Us. And we have to step up to the plate and yep. learn first how to heal ourselves. Yep. Because you can't heal somebody else till you heal yourself. And, and if somebody else doesn't want to be healed, you can't make them. And you can't make them right. You're going against their. Okay. But in the in the new energy, it seems like there will be a a a a, a large group of people that will seek healing. Correct. Just as there are hungry and people, many, many of them will get it just through pilgrimages, like here to Mount Shasta. Okay. Um, the the places of power will begin doing their their jobs once again at the highest levels. So all of the uh, sacred spots will be l loosened up, so to speak. Heavily charged with energy. Okay. Waiting for us to come there to mm -hmm. be the the bees that pollinate the energy and take it away. Wow. And so. Uh, all of these uh, pilgrimages to various places, mm -hmm. there will be your local area your local will be area. restored. Right. And will there be new uh, grids and ley lines created by the... The existing grids and ley lines will be able to go back to their natural positions. Oh, okay. And there will be people that will be working for many years erasing the old fake grid. Okay, and the, and the false sacred geometry Correct. and the false light codes. Yes, that, that'll actually be a job of many of the people that want to go in service to Earth. Okay, so just disconnecting the sacred geometry city system. That's a huge task because yes, it's yes. been built up for thousands of years. Hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands, right, right. Uh, all the, the city's names, the city streets, everything has been, you know, pretty much... Pretty much on the multi-dimensional design. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, um, do you want to share anything else about the... Before um, we take over, I want to finish touching on the the Syria conflict. Okay. As I was saying, they 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 took all their mind control parts. That it's Al Qaeda, because Al Qaeda is an American created invention. Right. That was created by time travelers who trained people outside of time to suddenly become cabal the members of the flight, yeah. who had to be real and at the same time had to be fake. Right. So. They move everything out of Syria because they went to Egypt and Libya. And then when the Libya war became to an end, it was about a drug war there and a gold war there. And then all the leftover zealot um, program agents went to Syria because Syria's revolution began also. At the same time, um, Iran began saying, sending its mind control units into Hezbollah to lure Israel out for another fake war event. At the same time, Americans were pounding, we're going into Israel, we're, or Iran, we're going into Iran. There's two carriers put out there and 200 websites saying, the carrier was sunk. No, it wasn't. Uh. Okay. There were many multidimensional action fronts on the oceans during the Iran-America chest bumping of 2011 and 2012 and part of our 2013 where the chicken hawks keep trying to beat the war drums. Oh. And they're beating their war drums because they're trying to get the machine to wake up and, and make more war. But the machine's not going to make more war. The recruiters can't get people to go in. And the existing people are leaving because they don't want to be in it anymore. Abandoning it left and right. Oh, that's something, of course, Then don't. you have the companies, because we're so, our unemployment, and real unemployment is about 35% here in the United States, mm -hmm. even though they're right. trying to call it 7%. Right. It's well into the 30s. Many of those military vets are screwed up. The only option to get is a job back as a private contractor through a military contractor corporation. Right. And then you're going off and doing worse things than you were in the military. Right. But you're getting paid $150,000 a year. Right. Right. Instead of your 32 or 18 that you were in war. Right. So there's just a, an increasing degradation of the system that's becoming more... More cannibalistic of itself. Yes, and it's just eating itself like the snake eating the tail. Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, one of the questions I want to ask you in the near future is uh, about David Wilcox's work on, on uncovering where the hidden reserves are, the, the movement of gold around the world, <laughs> and um, you know what's actually been happening with that. And that there are secret families, and mm -hmm. and there's there's another person that I can't I can't think of his name right now, but 
uh, and Gordon Duff from Veterans Today had said in one of his shows that uh, an American and a Chinese aircraft carrier were shooting 38,000 people in the world. Good. All right. Well, when we come back, maybe we can talk about the uh, gold and where it's been and who's There's holding it. There's all sorts of things to deal with the gold. Oh, yeah. I just want to remind those people that about the Italian bankers in Switzerland who's found $6 trillion worth of uh, bearer bonds. $6 trillion? Yeah, that made the news. Really? I know. I'm, I'm, I'm out of touch. I'll show the cl we can show the clip as part of the video, actually. Wonderful. Yeah, okay. CNBC actually had to report that. That's what seems to be happening, is that they're having to report certain things that are, are filtering from the underground, you know. But the thing is, that actual report was a, the, the graduating timeline had to have that in it for some of their other plans to exist. Ah. That's why they gave it the one consciousness blurb and tried to retract it. Okay, right. That makes sense. So and they do that frequently. Yes. Okay, well, stay tuned for more. Yep. We'll be back with part 12. Welcome back to our galactic history. This is part 12. This is Lance White with Andrew Bartzis. Hi. Well, we've been talking about wars and events that are not expected in the predictive models. And I'm going to throw a curveball at you because I want to talk about some of the lone gunman events and some of the things that have been going on that everybody's been speculating about. So I want to put them to bed once and for all. Mm -hmm. Who killed President Kennedy? <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten that curveball question. All right, times. all right. Yeah, so. uh, honestly, Kennedy killed himself. He did? No. Not literally. He was taken out by a gunman, but okay. it was a multi-dimensional event. Okay. He would have made the event come in the 60s and the 70s. Oh. Even if he wasn't in prison, he would have held spiritual contracts that were opposite of the system of domination and control. Mm. So his family lineage was collecting spiritual contracts to oppose the forces of domination and control. Mm -hmm. So when you have somebody collecting contracts to take your contract right away, what happens up happening to you when you're in the head of the office? You get taken out because their faction had made it all the way to the top. Ah. Faction is the key. Okay. Uh, what... So you want to know exactly who killed Kennedy? Well, if it's if you if it's on the tip of your tongue, well, exactly who killed Kennedy is not the way it's written. Okay, okay. Kennedy took a, a shot to the head, right. which was actually a multi-dimensional mm, brain popper. Ah, on camera, meant as a fear event, staged, spun, done exactly the way they wanted to, and in operation of etheric satellites at the same time he's being shot. Wow. So everyone was psychically aware when he was shot. Wow. Well, the whole I world. Uh, yeah. And I therefore, the programming turned on because it was a spun event. Ah. Uh, because his faction had used its last chip. So they were unable to go any further with... Correct. With, with the, freeing the world. With free, yeah. And then at that point, it's a matter Pow. of... Yeah. And you know that that's the yeah. only... So that's kind of where the forces of domination and control are being... Are posi posi being positioned now. Correct. They back themselves into a corner, and the only way out is, yeah. They once you play your last chip, chip, you're done. You're done. <laughs> yeah, you're done. Eventually, Unless somebody loans you money, or, uh, which that's of course part of the game of domination and control. Exactly. Okay. What about John Lennon? Now that I'm now that I'm asking about okay. people that we. John Lennon learned how to transcend time while on music while doing mm -hmm. music and it was the beginning of video recording and he began having beings show up in the video recordings and if he was allowed to live he would have influenced the millions into revolution well yes most assuredly there you go and that's why he was taken out i heard that yoko ono was part of the illuminati um no okay she's a free will individual that has been abused i i like her myself mm -hmm. i mean I've, I've always felt that she's you know uh, she has. Uh, mm -hmm. a, a There's one. a reason she, the two of them met. They were soul family. That oh, went yeah. back to the Lemurian yeah. age. And they would have translated, yeah. transmitted Lemurian singing technology. Wow. And upgraded people's soul codes and, and DNA just through singing. Wow. And of course, he has children too, Julian, and mm -hmm. I think a couple of others. So it's not like the game is over for them. Well, unless if he was a special person. Yes. And chose to make his talent very special. 
What about George Harrison? <laughs> He's a time war sufferer. Really? Time traveler many times over. Oh. Um, many times super soldiers program people, people in domination and control in the sexual abuse industry, they'll force people to watch a certain band or follow a certain band member and that helps them when they're ripped out of one time stream and put into another and these old guy bands are still around. They identify to them, they go to those concerts and then there's people always watching those concerts that can bring them back and shepherd them back into the system. Oh. So it's stuff, when you're working with musicians, this is integrated into the system to lure back people because it's easy to create an obsession for music that gives you a positive benefit. Right. And thus that lures you back into the loop. Right. So I'm guessing that the Rolling Stones are part of that. Well, somehow part of that. that they are a part of it, but ironic thing about the Rolling Stones is they create a music that passes generations. Right. When you listen to the original recordings of Sympathy for the Devil, you only get what you need. Mm -hmm. It's a total vibration than the modern recorded ones that are remastered of the new systems. It doesn't have the same 60s power behind it. Hmm. Hmm. Because that was recorded during that time frame. Oh, right, right. Um, and what about the Jimmy Seville scandal that broke not too terribly long ago? Absolute proof that the sexual abuse ring is runs to the highest levels of government and media. Hmm. Yes. It's global. And, in fact, and it's been around a very, very long very time. Very long time. And I hear that the Netherlands is a hotbed, a nest of... You know, all throughout like Queen Beatrix, all throughout Europe, there are right. pockets of it. But that's been that system of pockets of sexual ch child abuse and, and slavery has been there for thousands of years, also. So there are entire communities. That's all that they do. Right, and the, there's the, everything might look like uh, normal tulips and roses and things, but uh, there's people uh, locked in the basement. Right, right, right. Okay. Um, so that brings me back to some of these other lone gunman events, mm -hmm. which I'm guessing are also multidimensional and time travel. They are time travelers that are put into a future timeline. As I've been saying, it's all about 2011 to 2014. So all these lone gunmen are secret pieces that have been played unaware of any other faction, or no other faction was aware of it. So... It, mm. Example, Sandy Hook. Sandy Hook, you know, the, the guy that we all see on camera all drugged out. Mm -hmm. Well, that guy, that particular person, isn't the actual person that did the, did the mission. Okay. He was created and dominated and controlled, put there, and was waited for his time travel code activation to go and do this event there. Okay. There was a team waiting there for him to put another dark entity in him that could physically do the killing. Oh. And he went there with a the team, got the kills in for him himself also, and the test of the team did that. As they extracted him, one of the team was injured, got scared. He wandered off and then was taken over by the police who had puppetry entities in them that became part of the, the team. Because they were free-willed police and all of a sudden something was inside them made them did something different. Wow. The other people got away, he got blamed, he then is the the contract holder for all the fear spin that was done afterwards. Oh, wow. So that event didn't necessarily go off like it was planned. No, there was too many people that picked it apart. Oh, you're right, right. But listen to the, the, the fact that they didn't take into the understanding that there's thousands of people, or hundreds of thousands of people worldwide that listen to police scanners. Oh. There are internet stations that, that just put the, old, the, the whole thing up. My radio station, freedomslips.com, Revolution Radio, actually has an ac access to all police band broadcastings throughout the entire world available on their channel. Nice, nice. And during the Boston event, all of those went dead silent. Everybody's police scanners went silent. And so that was part of the technology? Because they had figured out that people were listening to that. Ah, ah. And they do things like this. Some of these events are planned to determine how much the resistance of free earth right is there and ready to react and to find out you know how right. yes how it's quickly tribal. how quickly right. yes and of course all of the major um, and it allows them to test their data right so it it, it could be uh, no more uh, uh, unusual than a, a test a test balloon going up correct okay 
And they do that uh, on all the major uh, media like Facebook and uh, all the different uh, social media sites. And that's all pretty much run by artificial intelligence. And teams of remote influencers. Okay, so Google and all the major... Well, the, the actual people in Google, no, they're separate. These are the franchises that I spoke about in an earlier episode. Right. They have access to the raw data that is collected on us from all those social networking data mining sites. Oh. That information is then fed into an artificial intelligence that makes a massive computation and makes a predictive model for each individual and then the whole in total. And then road influencers look at this data and process the data and then begin to target lineages of people through the internet who have an ability to reach far. Mm. But some events that, that have been predicted as being in the future have to be there, but they have a certain amount of... Uh, Wiggle space. Right, right, to adjust and, and mm -hmm. you know, make modulation Correct. controls. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, the Boston Marathon? Ah, uh, the Sonara Brothers. <laughs> An absolute perfect example of sleeper cells that have been people that have been taken out of time mind controlled and given bombs bomb weapon bomb and weapon training brought back into time with all the equipment that they needed and storage lockers to hide it and passes to be who they were for three years because there was a clone living in the place when they took them out outside of time okay. and then when they put them back in the clone that was holding space was given the dominant personality inside them to keep their cover until they were both triggered to do the operation wow Wow, I'll have to I'll have to listen to that again. <laughs> That's a head scratcher. <laughs> That's the way they they do these cell activations. Right. The the guy in the Sikh temple, exact same thing. Aurora, same thing, except on a, a fact that it was designed literally to reach out to the whole world. And do one of the fifteen of the families, or one of the fifteen beings, triggered those things orchestrated it from the highest level okay, with its right. puppetry ability okay uh, or and uh, several of them may have been in, may have been privy to it no Aurora was one particular okay. being the one that's in charge of North America oh okay so there uh, are there different sections that they're in charge of yes they've each got their own little Dominion Dominion okay and then they coordinate all that information not always but they do with coordinate. reservations yes. Okay, I got you. There basically was an agreement to coordinate basically up until the very end, 2011 to 2014. They would coordinate all the way until then. So after 2014, the the, the ability to coordinate, everybody's on their own? Well, we got, we're not in time anymore. We're not in division, di disunity time. So the, it, it begins to dissolve their, their control. Right. Their control right. is based off of time. That's, that's the fundamental right, axis. Right, right. Because of all the time wars and everything, and the time, and that all stops. If our belief of time changes, all their time <laughs> is a microscopic piece of dust compared to the expansion. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's a pinprick. That's right. And that just dissolves everything. It changes the whole, you yeah. know, the whole paradigm. Um, what about Fukushima? Um... This is an example of when the faction that's in charge of Israel and the faction that's in charge of the Middle East, which is two separate multidimensional beings, okay. disagreed on how much they were going to put DNA off-world, how much they were going to get rid of people. Mm -hmm. When they do a mass die-off event like that, what they said 22,000 was killed on the news, they're just taking those people and selling them. Wow. Okay. Okay. It has a fear event dimensionality to it also. Right. So it serves all the purposes, but the Israeli faction triggered Fukushima to go off and planned the spin afterwards with the American medias and the faction that was in charge of the Middle East didn't want that to happen. They wanted to keep it between Israel and Hezbollah. And all of a sudden, Hezbollah was neutralized for, for many, many weeks. Mm. It wasn't in the news. Mm. Hezbollah, the organization for Hezbollah, was infiltrated by American resistance for Earth people. Oh. And they needed to reassert power over that. That's why they wanted that event there. The Japanese people, which are part of the Oriental faction, were never told that they were going to do this event on them. So that caused a major reverberation against the Israeli forces, and many of their controllers were eliminated. 
Ah. So it was a fight between the two modality dimensional beings, one who said, I need this fear event now, I need to milk as much energy out of the world that I can, right. and I don't care what you think. Right, right. That started the triad wars that we have now between the multidimensional beings. Ah. Now, are, are they all at war with each other, pretty much? Timeline war with each other. Okay. Manipulative war with each other. But at the same time, they're all looking at the light forces that are out oh, there. Oh, well, right. They're surrounded. Oh, each one are. is the Hitler in a bunker right now. Oh, that's a good analogy. Whatever happened to Hitler, did he actually... Did, wasn't he pulled out of there? He, there was a clone that was left there and burnt. Okay. And he was brought to South America, right. and then to try to access Hollow Earth, where he was rejected, and then sent to the astral world for recyclement. Ah, okay. Because he was a part of one of the multidimensional beings that was designed to be a lightning rod for karma, ah. because that particular being needed to balance its own karma. So it put a, a piece of an evil piece really forward and created the war, and part of the evolution factor of, of the of the rest of the beings. But he was able to take all the karma, because there would be 50 years of TV about World War II and how evil Hitler was, mm -hmm. balanced that being's karma and allowed him to be more in the game than he was before. Mm. But if he, was, if he was recycled at the end... A piece. Oh, a piece. Okay, Just a piece. Okay. A sovereign piece. Okay. Remember, this is always a multidimensional game. They literally will sacrifice one piece to balance more karma. Huh. Interesting. Okay, now what about uh, the BP oil spill? Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> that is an example of extra-dimensional entities that are players in the game, but no, no, no match for the, the, the 15 beings here, and no match for the beings that are enforcing the quarantine, but they have enough technology and enough balls to try to break the quarantine. Mm. So they can create an event that wasn't expected by any of the predictive models <laughs> and that they would be able to manifest their ships during that time to save the Gulf from being flooded with poisonous oil. Hmm. Okay. That faction is called the Zik, J-I-Z-Z-K, Sada, a species of people. They're a mix between, we'll describe it as human form six to seven feet tall um, bone structure is essentially 10 to 12 percent denser than ours but they still look like us so they'd have more pronounced bone bonage sort of deanderthal looking but that's the improper word there's just not a linguistics that describes it but they have more pronounced face um, and their DNA lineage goes back to one of the original 72 species, first species of Earth. And they do have a big soul family here, but they're a minor player, but they never chose to be a part of the 5,283 races defending us. They chose to be their own egoic force, and uh, hero to the rescue force. And there are other species that are doing that also. Mm -hmm. There are many species that are on the mid to lower level, or even in the upper level, like the Zetas, whose sole goal is to be the very first species to occupy Dreamtime with the Dreamtime city. Oh. So they can pull their people out first. Oh. So there's a bit of ego on that level because all these beings have been trying to free Earth, have been running their own program, separate than the master program and the, the, the main command ships in the, that are here. So you have other operations in the light forces and the gray forces too. And so, in a sense, they're they're in relation to the larger forces that are assisting. They're like rogues. Yes. Okay. And and that, but they could be accounted for. But that all takes energy to Correct. account for what what everybody's doing. Exactly. In every timeline and so on and so forth. Exactly. Except it's easier now with just the one time one timeline. So we should see an acceleration of. I mean, technically. I mean, the word acceleration has too many 3D matrix oh, okay, to okay. Re reference to it. it. It always happens when it happens, okay, because the okay. the the con the wave wavelength of total consciousness of Earth reaches a the peak in the bell curve, and then it goes down again, and then it peaks again, and then it goes down right. again, and it peaks again, right. and it happens on a peak. Okay, it doesn't ever happen on a down. Always happens on a peak. 
Okay, um, and we're in uh, we're in a, a peak. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> no question about well, well, the full the super full moon tonight, mm -hmm. and then we started these interviews on the twenty first, the solstice. Mm -hmm. uh, the energy's definitely been and on Mount Shasta on mm -hmm. top of it. So, um, but to, to to add a little more to what what we were talking about, the predictive models think there's going to be eighteen peaks this year. Okay, so there are 18 positions in which all of the individual factions have to make their moves. And yet there, many of their moves are going to be countered. So it's what, it's what moves win during those 18 peaks determines the total value of consciousness for that year. Oh, huh, interesting. Because each one is devices, divisive or multiplicative of the consciousness. So if the forces of light win, they multiply consciousness. If the darkness wins, they, 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 they deplete consciousness. The total <laughs> vibration of all sentient life living right now here on Earth. Okay. And according to uh, what you're looking into uh, from the Akashic Records, uh, would you say that there's going to be an expansion of consciousness in general? We've had seven peaks so far. Seven peaks, okay. So there's 11 more peaks to go during the end of the year. <laughs> So that means there's 11 more attempts at fear, fear, right. fear pointing right. versus consciousness expansion. And any one, and then plus you have the random wild cards now that which are, are people up. standing up and claiming their sovereign will and acting upon it. And is the one people's trust one of those things that, that was planted or seeded it was, to divert? Or? Just with any organization that rises, it will ultimately be taken be atta over. attacked. Not necessarily taken over, attacked. Okay. Um, it's the first time anyone's ever foreclosed on the Fed with the, let's just call it the actual internet age. It's been done 20 times before where people realized the Fed was fake, it had no charter, the corporate system has no charter, our laws, are, our corporate courts, all of our bonded uh, oath and bonded judges are under corporate bond, which is not a state, a state oath bond given by the President of the United States. So. None of our judges are actually really judges. They're just corporate people. Wow. They all sell bonds for every case. Okay. So if you go to court, there isn't your name that has a bond with the hundreds of thousands of dollars right. attached to it, right. which is then traded on the open corporate networks and actually traded on the stock market. Wow. And you can actually look it up. Wow. And I uh, have heard that uh, yeah, when we're born, we're bo born with a... a you're born as livestock, actually. Yes, in the exactly. We're traded on the on that. Exactly. You're born dead, actually. Huh? How then? How does that work? Well, as soon as you're well, this is how the American system works. As soon as you're born, there's a live uh, certificate of live birth and then right. a birth certificate. The certificate of live birth is written in a way that you give away all all your rights until you're seven, and you have to claim your rights back when you're seven. Otherwise, you remain permanently dead as livestock. Therefore, they can do anything they want to you because they changed the actual definitions of that law for that law, and then other laws change the definitions to mean something else. And many, many, many laws do this. If people want to look up the most screwed up law, the one that allows Agenda 21, go look up H.R. 3474, the Regal Community Development Act of 1994. Okay. You will read in page um, 261 to 266 on the actual Library of Congress official PDF document, um, actually where they repealed every banking law from the 1930s to the 2000 to 1994. And they repealed them in such a way that they changed the lang linguistics by two, three, or four words so that it meant something completely opposite of the original intention. And that is the document that is the rollout for Agenda 21. Oh. I've done dozens of shows on it. Okay. Dozens so, of dozens of shows. Oh, interesting. So Agenda 21 is moving forward. No, the Agenda 20, that's the law that got it to go forward. They made it oh, legal. Oh, okay, okay. That's the law that made it legal. Okay. Okay, as well as the banking scandal of 2008 to actually happen, made it legal. Okay, so if the, if the Fed has been, if, if we've gone through this so many times, then what's happening is... It's just being altered in subtle ways so that it's re reinstated. Right. Okay. Okay. That Remember, they're sense. time traveling. Right. So they're right. writing laws that affect their time traveling that mm -hmm. can be manipulated, but just by changing 35 words 
for one in one paragraph of a thousand page law and then they have 35 other laws that right. have riders inside them that will all be affected too by the definition change and we don't have any access to the courts that are right. I mean they're and in fact the, the the loss of the system of law that we have today will never allow you to completely load all of the right. laws that are passed into a computer that can do a network analysis on it right because it'll show that it's a multi-dimensional document uh, right. right that has time traveling uh, concepts to it and I challenge people out there to do it yourself uh. you out there <laughs> Uh, so we're uh, at the end of our segment for now, and um, episode 13 next. Yes. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to part 13 of our galactic history. This is Lance White with Andrew Bartzis. Mm -hmm. Welcome again. Thank you. <laughs> An outstanding interview. Thank you. I, I'm just astonished at the information that we're able to... We were just talking about in the, uh, before, while we were on break is how fast that the information comes out. Yes. I mean, as, as an interview, have you ever experienced anything like that? No. It's, it feels like light speed. You know, I mean, it's, it's just, uh, it seems like we just start the segment and then poof, it's over. <laughs> it's over. And, and there's a, no, the interesting thing is that there's absolutely no gap in the information stream and you know I'm sitting here talking to you live and I can you know I know for myself that you're speaking the truth so for myself I know that I'm hearing the real honest to God facts about what's going on and that's something I've been looking for all my life is just to find somebody who can say yes this is what happened here this is what happens here and only a galactic historian could do that <laughs> exactly why I'm here now yeah yeah so even if you weren't here we would have to have created you <laughs> we would have had to materialize you materialize it. yeah um, so that in itself is a fortuitous timing so all that we're talking about is, is very hopeful even though we cover a multitude of events that are you know dark and negative and and perhaps a little frightening um, the very fact that we're speaking about them is, is bright and shining beacon of hope <laughs> broadcasting you know out and in and so on and so forth um, so we were talking a little bit about the the Federal Reserve and its uh, control and the monetary system which is an esoteric mm -hmm. uh, it's a magical system isn't it your, your dollar bill and every other printed bill out there is in effect a spell that locks you into spiritual contracts that puts you into the system of monetary exchange for value and applies you to all the laws because the way the laws are written when the Federal Reserve was was created it was a multi-dimensional effect that put the foundation piece that took over all the other foundation pieces of the monetary system worldwide mm -hmm. as we began to take gold away from the system Gold originally held our money. Gold and silver held our energy. The actual reserves held the energy. And those systems, the old way they would deal with them, would drain the money out of the gold and give it to the system of domination and control. The, the gold was like giant crystal batteries. Hmm. So they would literally take it out of that. Once they get, got the Internet age and the telecommunication age, they didn't need gold. They knew it was coming, phased it out, and they had 20, work, 20 years where it was all done on paperwork. Mm -hmm. And that paperwork was was mined for energy. And then it went to a digital system that was interconnected to the Internet, and there was instant repayment to any parts of the domination control system. So they basically have carte blanche yes. to do anything they want. Correct. And so does the gold have any intrinsic value? It has many metaphysical and intrinsic values in, on a healing nature. Okay. But its reason it, it's set up here is gold is a vital part of consciousness exploration. Mm. Okay, and that's what makes parts of our, our our land very special. The amount of gold that's in there, because the gold can interact with your consciousness, which is part of the resonant field of the land that you're in. Mm -hmm. And gold is part of a mineral community and does have a spirit within it. Mm -hmm. But right. when gold is put into brick form in mass amounts of energy, the spirit of of the gold is basically suppressed back into the earth, and those bars are emptied of the spiritual energy, and only filled with the amalgamation of our exchange for value system. So it doesn't really matter who's holding gold bars. It's 
that's part of the illusion. It's part of the illusion. So follow, following the money trail and the trillions that are lost and the gold reserve. It serves a purpose. Okay. Um, before I believe in the last of us, we talked about uh, six trillion dollars of gold right. bearer bonds suddenly right. appeared out of nowhere, and this was reported on CNBC, the actual news. Is, and what it was is there were bearer bonds from the 1940s or 1943. David Wilcox reported on this actually. That's right. Quite, quite That's a few right. times. Yes. Um, and those this was for six trillion dollars worth of worth of exchange for gold for the American Federal Reserve. And three or four Italian bankers tried to go to Switzerland and cash all six trillion. Okay, that was a faction within the Vatican that was trying to save its banking industry, mm -hmm. and went into its basement and pulled out all these bearer bonds, which was gold that was stolen from the Asian countries during the Asian part of World War II. <coughs> and you can read all this in David Wilcox's blog. And this is all uh, true to the Akashic record. Oh, good, good. Okay, the. Gold itself that they tried to cash was to save the Vatican banking industry. If you look in the modern day now, J.P. Morgan Chase broke all ties with the Vatican Bank and then a week later had the whale scandal. Mm. That's in the news record. Mm. The, the London whale scandal where they lost, what, $11 billion in a day? I had, was, I had, that's one I missed. That, that... <laughs> you can look it up. Okay. <laughs> I challenge the people out there to look it up. <laughs> okay. Okay, um, so uh, so the movement of, of the actual gold is probably something that... Gold was needed to encase human beings so right. they could be smuggled off the world. Right. So that's why they needed to get the, off you with the gold currency. Now, are there, are there uh, people that are holding the gold? Where is it now? The vast majority of the gold reserves have been taken. And whatever is left now is what they're pulling out of the ground and smelting into bars. The whole reason they want your jewelry is they need gold to replace what's disappeared. Uh, and so it's been just offloaded, it's been taken off world? Correct. And which will be returned to us in an energy for value system in conjunction with the earth hive mind and the hive mind sentience of all the other planets that are coming here to resolve karma. So there'll be a massive reserve of energy that people have been stolen from for the last 400,000 years. Wow. So there'll be a massive reserve of energy, not money. Right. right. So it's an energy. Everything is energy. Right, right. And so that, that could be the transformation. That, Correct. Yeah. And so we don't need to worry about abolishing the Fed or anything like that. There It'll will, happen on TV. Uh, but at the same time, right. there will be in no time for a lot of that. Right. So really what it is is I don't think there's going to be a transition system. Right. I think we will transition and the system will be waiting there for us. Right, right. That makes much more sense. And then those who need to have a gradual will have their time. Will have have time to watch television. Say, look, time. I'm, right. In separated time, while we're right. in unity time. Right, because we're in unity consciousness now. Right. But and we're still in what, disunity consciousness. But we're in unity time. Unity time. And disunity consciousness. And largely run by our unconscious aspects, there not our go. conscious aspects. So it's all about becoming more conscious. Yes. And, and sovereign. And sovereign. In the realm that you're going to create. Okay. Um, what is there any truth to the, uh, what's the, what is the truth to, about the Leo Wanta uh, Nasara fiasco? But the funds are coming any day, folks. <laughs> there are no funds. Any, for any <laughs> faction to make any move at that scale to say they're changing the system is a psych operation. Fear operation. If it, yeah. Even if it's a positive light entity doing it. Right. It may be trying to do that to bring hope to people, but anytime you make a hope campaign like that, you should know down in your gut that somebody's going to turn it into a fear campaign right. way easier than a hope campaign. Right. But, you know, hope can be used on the dark side too. They keep pulling the rug from out from under them, making you think it happens. You're, you're hurting them with hope. Mm. You're hurting them with hope. Stop it. Hmm. Stop believing in it. It's never going to come. They're not going to give you any money. Money that's stolen and cannibalized from everyone else. You want that blood money? Mm. Right. And all the trillions of, of, of deaths. Because that... they're going to flood you with that negative energy money. And you think Nasera would be free? Oh, no. It's it another be more, it's, be Even more, more control. Even more, yes. In fact, that would be a, a, a very clever trick 
of, of a galactic group to, you know, flood you with negative and energy then, money. And then that's the, this is the new system, and here we're rolling it out, free money, everybody. Yeah, free yeah. money, nothing. Yeah, more. yeah, and just more slavery. More slavery. So, um, really, we're shifting from a material view to a multidimensional and those beings like like Leo, like you were mentioning, they don't they either do or they don't know they're being used at some level. Okay. okay. Uh, there may be parts of them that truly believe they're doing the right thing, but from my neutral perspective of the Akashic records of the big picture that's behind it, you're being used. Yeah, yeah. And anytime we buy into the carrot, you know, the You get to stick it. with it. Yes. The right. Right. And you were talking about the oh there was something that you talked about earlier, the slap on the horses at... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just remembered that. I just remember line. that. Uh, the Syria war, the yeah. Iran war, all of that was the official, we'll just say, unbridled horse that somebody walked up to and slapped on the ass and it <laughs> took off uncontrolled. So so these are events that are are actually happening that are game-changing events instead they of the, break the predictive model and therefore they must make brand new predictive models that are nowhere near as accurate as the other ones which means there's an exponential breakdown in the predictive model correct because the technology cannot keep up with correct. something with uh, and they don't have enough spiritual people running the technology because uh, too many of them are in domination and control right. without full sentience to understand all the data and they're in comp con uh, competition with each other and they're internally and externally, externally. so that is really a uh, recipe for disaster yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's huge as event. right right so uh, it seems like if one were to uh, predict what was coming and of course we can't but if one were to try it seems like there could be a lot of comical events that will be exposed through the media and then also there will the be media will be a big joke yeah um, how will that? How do you see that unraveling? Uh, hmm. Let me find the words for it. Okay. okay. There will come a time where there'll be enough people marching that members of Congress will not be in the country. Oh. At that point, the corporate offices will have people camped out in front of them, and those people will leave the country. And the news media on the local level report and the national level won't. And that will be the main media issue, the local units that are saying, no, I'm going to give you the middle finger, I'm going to report the truth. And then the national units using their corporate powers to start firing people. Mm. Okay, so there will be independent news agencies that start their own internet news agency mm -hmm. for free to get the truth out. Um, um, Bob Smith of Channel 7 News, who's now on Channel you know, Z News yeah. on YouTube continuing a show with the same production staff that said, no, we're not going to be a part of this lie. Uh, on a military level, there will be factions within factions that begin to try to um, seize control of the military for both good and bad, mm -hmm. because the, uh, the, the fear with inside the military is the weapons. Mm -hmm. um, in a law enforcement scenario, you'll have officers who refuse to start arresting people. Um, because they're learning about the true sovereign citizen and what is what is real about their court system, because mm. um, that'll come out too. Judges will be abdicating because mm. there'll be major, major, major crimes against them. Mm -hmm. And then the stock market people, they will have the toughest time, the big figures that are there commonly on the news. And then the talking heads of the news industry, both positive and negative, you know, you know the big the big three, mm -hmm. they will have to face a major moment of self-reflection. Many of them will, will explode on air, suddenly be taken off air. Others will simply say, I'm not coming back, and they'll have to instantly replace them with somebody that doesn't have the same projective power over with propaganda. Wow. Therefore, the system just degrades and degrades and degrades. And then that implies that the, the corporate lockdown and the figure eight of, the, of all these interlocking corporations will start to dissolve. Correct. Many of them will simply steal from themselves. Yeah. And as they steal from themselves, they create um, the Bernie Madoff effect inside their own. And inevitably, the market that's controlled becomes uncontrolled because all these systems unfunded themselves by theft. 
Right. Well, since everybody's stealing, you know, they'll right. all start putting their hand in the end. Then they beat it. A run, you know, run for the hills. A secret run for the hills. A secret run for the hills. Right. But it will have its uh, its effects in, in media and in and in and in physicality. That will be unmistakable. Correct. Like when Congressman Joe and Bob and Dean suddenly decide to leave, and when the news agency goes to look for them, their staff says, oh, we don't know where they're at." Right. Right. And then there's you know thirty, forty, fifty members of Congress who got the early warning to leave because you know. People are starting to say, "Hey, right, finally, 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 they're standing up and and putting their feet to the fire, <clears throat> and that will be duplicated in Europe too, and in Asia and Japan and all the major countries that have sacred geometry cities. Where is it likely to begin? It does in many places at once. It, it, right. It's a standing right. wave that's going to spread around the world multiple right. times. Right." And that would it seems like that would be a fairly quick wave. Well, as you a said, a series it has of peaks. small waves with peaks and valleys. Okay, and there's no it, way to predict it. You can't give it to them all at once. Right. They'll right. just the, the humanity can't take it. It's got to take it in doses. Okay. All right. Uh, a lot of alcoholics will be uh, hitting the bottle. <laughs> well, they already are. They already are. I think people will be sobering up. I'm like, oh my God, throw away the bottle and. Mm -hmm. So, um, what else will be uh, some of the impacts that that we can look for as part of the signs that that we're truly in the wave of awakening and, and the dreams that I've described before? Oh, right. um, it's going to come on subtly, and then people are going to go, "Where did this all come?" And they're going to look with hindsight. It's been here a while. There'll be a lot of people that will deny their dreams, but. How often can you deny, deny your dreams if you're having them four or five or six days a week and shit coming true? Right, right. So that's like a, in a sense, it's like a bleed through of the truth. Yes. And a a dispelling of the illusion mm -hmm. so people will start seeing what's really there. So they can see no time. Yeah. And that's led no by... No social agreement time. No so clarify that. No social, social agreement, agreement time. Time we're living on is a social agreement. Right, and that will, because there is no time. There's no time defined as social agreement. There's galactic time, which is based off of your your solar system in revolution from the galactic central sun, and your solar system is a sine wave that represents the total population of consciousness on a graph okay. of energy. And then um, you said that source was uh, basically, uh, it was a neural network of the suns and the galactic central Correct. suns. So we're, we're literally in the mind of, of the creator, of, of source. In a sense, everyone is in a sense. That's just the way the universe is set up, and in a, in a way, we're like a holographic fractal of as human linguistics okay. limiting. We're, we're spiritual entities that we create the hologram, uh, and then we create a uh, unity hologram, and then we all add pieces, parts to it. Okay, so it's all co-creation. Well, I'm looking forward to the time when we, we have those two desks, to the, the one and the other, and we can, you know, practice our skills. That sounds like a That'll lot of fun. fun to me. And there'll be other people that use musical instruments as their, as their freedom. Oh, right. Yeah. And, and light, uh, light. Clothing differences, massive difference in clothing. Um, what are some of the other shifts that you see? Uh, well, there would have to be a change in the Internet. Uh, well, that, the psychic parasites have to be removed from that, that That's easy technology. Wherever there's a server, it, it just has a piece of technology that clears out the the, 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 the parasites. Okay. It's a neutralizer. Okay. Because I see something, I see uh, instant communications. Well, going beyond the Internet, we, we are... Be consciousness transference. You're, you're sitting here and you pick up your home telephone and another part of you appears over there. And you hang up the telephone and go about your day while it does what you need it to do. Nice. <laughs> nice. I like the sound of that. I mean, this is the more at the more advanced level. Right. You know, we, we as human beings don't have a don't have the the operator's manual. Never right. got it. Right. You'll have an operator's manual, but you'll still have to learn it to get your final graduation party. And that's you putting the time to healing yourself with what's going on inside the machine. And then that's that's a, the way to step on the accelerator of your own evolution. Correct. Is healing, healing yourself and, healing and doing the inner work, and nurturing, learning, nurturing, loving yourself, and not just talking about it. Correct. And being the the words, not just speaking them. Exactly. 
<clears throat> and truth. And truth. Truth. And transparency. Absolutely. So all these things that have been given lip service and have been reversed over and over and are continually reversing on us uh, will be at, at what they see. They will be seen for what they are. Okay. Okay. One of the things that I had heard about recently that, uh, of course, we can't find anything about because it's all secret technology, uh, is some, uh, some kind of device in Antarctica that's mm -hmm. 75 miles long that has been studied by mm -hmm. Russia and China. And the Lake Vladivostok is its name. Yeah. And there's a device below it that's a 70-mile-long solid piece of metal. And that 70 mile long solid piece of metal is an energy battery left over from Lemuria that kept the South Pole in alignment with technology that was in, let's just say, the, that version of the, those air cities. <clears throat> and that device linked in the dream times of the astral world to the dream times of the underground cities in Hollow Earth. So the Hollow Earth people didn't have to use intermediaries to function in the astral world for contract contractual purposes that earth time earth incarnation good was much more free than when that device was created hmm and is it still functioning not for its original purpose because okay. the layer it would be in the fourth fortification of earth of the nine fortifications of the astral realm through pyramid grids that that was created and that particular device, as, as I said, is to be a battery of energy that's linked into the um, all the snow that they knew was going to be there and the ice that created pressure on a crystalline structure that makes a massive piezoelectric effect hmm. on the entire bottom part of the, the pole there. Okay. So that gives the ability for that device, when properly activated through the control rooms, the ability to raise the consciousness of the Earth from the from the South Pole up, oh. which can trigger unity, dream, global dream, dream time. Um, okay. Um, what about the, uh, the the? There was another uh, piece that I read about about the boxes that were washed up on the sand that mm -hmm. were and some of them all over the world. All over the world. These boxes were devices similar to the ones that were put on Planet X, Nibiru, whatever you want to call it to prevent us from re-manifesting it in our reality. They, they basically, if, if propaganda were to be successful, um, the ground would be altered by some type of disaster. And these boxes at the edge there would absorb the wave of consciousness change of what, what it is and would lessen the actual damage that, that it did. And Fukushima is the classic example of that. The tidal wave should have hit America, should have taken gone all over, and it didn't. Mm -hmm. And so they had removed the boxes around Japan. Around so Japan, so they could have that. <clears throat> but it, but what stopped it from uh, becoming a, a global tidal wave? Yeah, the other boxes on the other side of the ah, ocean. Okay, so they they didn't do it the best. They of only them. removed the ones around Japan, so the disaster could happen. Oh, okay, all right. Was that a rush event? They, the, the, it wasn't planned out properly. No, that was the Israel that did. Oh, right, that's right. That's episode, right. Yeah. That's right. We did talk about that. Um, are there other devices that we are unaware of that are left over from Lemuria? They probably all There's kinds dozens and of dozens and dozens of dozens of devices, and many of the sacred geometry cities are built on top of these devices. And like the device in Moscow. Okay. Um, what there's a device in the underground of Moscow that essentially allows the city of Moscow in its in its Dreamtime consciousness to have a micro version of a control room. Oh. And that city can actually turn into a, I'll just describe it as a vessel of consciousness. Huh. There's stolen Arcturian con technology that's underneath there, and it could take the consciousness of anyone that's in the sacred geometry and dump it into a unity drive, and that, that city could just ascend from our world and go to any other planet and then be co-located on another planet. Wow. And there are other cities that have similar technology like that, but they don't have the microcontrol rooms to do it. It was a particular generation of technology that was so refined by a group of, of uh, consciousness explorers millions of years ago wow. that ultimately left Earth, but left that in that area. And uh -huh. as the reality reshift, reshaped, the technology was still there, and then people began inheriting, inheriting, and finding out more until 
finally the Russian factions figured out what it was. Oh, so they know how to use it. And have used it. And have used yes. it. So During um, World War II, during, during the invasions. Ah. Uh, to ma get a mass amount of people off the planet for DNA trade. Oh. Because that's all that Le uh, Lenin was doing. All the killings that he was doing was to get DNA off. Ah, uh, and so basically all wars are about... Rem Again, remember there's m thousands well, of species out there that are near dead. Yeah. And will do anything for the DNA to survive their species. Uh, and you have a mafia charging an arm and a leg with interest. Right, right. So they're in on all the technological advances. So they're part of the 15 families, I'm guessing. The 15, the 15 beings, beings don't need families. They just need a breeding group. And there are other factions other than them. They're just the ones that are the best puppet players in this game. Now, um, you mentioned once in the uh, in the galactic history that goes back in the fifty million years the, the period mm -hmm. that there was a two million period year period when Earth it, wasn't in this universe. Yes. Now, what what about that entity? Was that a creator? That was God? another universal entity that said, "Time out in your universe. I'm taking that." Took it there did what it needed to do and to Earth said, no, you're not doing that with me anymore. And it took out the rolled up newspaper and smacked that universal being on the nose and came back here and started up doing what it was doing. Wow. So there are beings with that kind of ability. Yes. Okay. Now, essentially, we are those beings in, in a sense. In we... a smaller micro form. Okay. Yes. Okay. I mean, it all goes up and goes down. But for right now, for this description at this point in time, we just need to know the bigger picture of our world. Right, right. So that we can take back our sovereignty. Right, right. And start acting like the sovereign <laughs> beings with <laughs> power. Right. Okay. Well, uh, we've, we're just about at the end of uh, segment 13. Is there anything you want to add Pretty before good now? Well, then we'll, we'll be back. back. <laughs> we're back again with the Galactic Librarian. How you doing Andrew Bartitz. This is part 14. I'm guest hosting tonight. Uh, Lance is taking a break and I get to pop in and see if I can ask the perfect question. It's all about the questions. <laughs> so what kind of questions do you have for me tonight? So I'm very intrigued by your role as a galactic librarian. Mm -hmm. Galactic historian. The librarian is just another aspect within it. Um, when I first began to understand its purpose, um, the records itself needed perception, and that perception is what ultimately showed me my role. So the role and the perception are one and the same. The sacred neutral perspective is the role that I play as a reader of the Akashic record. The Akashic record that I am mainly reading is the Akashic record of Earth sentience, that is the total sentience that has lived on Earth as a physical body on the center timeline. There's above timeline and a below timeline. The Akashic record is the center timeline, but the above timeline avatars all have sentience in the graduation timeline. So you can see the Akashic record from the above perspective or the below perspective, but it's both sacred neutral. And it's what allows you to understand the graduation process. When I chose to be the galactic historian, I understood the sacred neutral perspective is how I needed to do all presentations. And the presentation is being able to connect into the Akashic records from the sacred neutral perspective with the endurance to do it not in a trance, not medic medicated in any way, shape, or form, to have friends and family, to have loved ones, to have hobbies, to have a job. I still had to do all that as a function of the sacred neutral. And the more you get into the sacred neutral, the more you are connected to the sentience of Earth, the consciousness of Earth, that is saying, I'm a loving being, and these are all my children, but this still comes to an end. And you bring in the perspective of the galactic prime creator. Prime creator is neutral. It is neither it is neither polarity. Prime Creator created polarity for his pieces parts to teach him about the micro world 
and the micro world below that and the micro world below that so he can create the world above himself which is to create more galaxies or more universes so the perspective is the role because the role is sh reading the record in a t intonation and a vibration that is revealed by the hearts of hearts to have connection to a vibration that is truth for one individual through discernment many 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 shows do I say use your own discernment you know there are people out there that channel one type of information there are people that do another type of information when people observe my my material it is like nothing else because it's from the Akashic record and that's my presentation and the role is the presentation so you mentioned earlier that you are the only galactic librarian living on Earth. Is that true? In history, right now. In history, when you say in history, meaning since known Earth history, Akashic history. Earth Akashic history. I have the records of twenty thousand others, and in the twenty thousand others, as I said, there was only three previous galactic historians, and they all died horrible deaths. On in Earth or some other planets? Other planets. So this is Earth's first galactic in resident. Historian. Historian. And when you read the Akashic Record and you're maintaining the sacred neutral perspective, how, how do you stay on course? How do you avoid from veering plus or minus, so to speak? How do you avoid graying the issue? Um, just to clarify, there hasn't been a galactic historian on Earth since 28,000 B.C. There was a galactic historian that came from somewhere else, outside of time, through a time war. But this is Earth's first spawned galactic historian, which would be me who said yes. Incarnated in the physical. To be here with others that also had the same choice. Um, and there will be others that get the choice as the event comes, because our history is going to be so vitally important to our healing. Mm -hmm. To answer your question, how do you remain neutral? There is a mechanical function to energy, so when this is in alignment with this cycle, with this cycle, and with this cycle, all three are perfect spokes on a wheel, none of them missing anything, and that's how I know I'm remaining in the sacred neutral, because the way I read the record is in the neutral position. If I'm to this, it's like this waveform. It's just a stream of information. Mm. And you've been running the cameras, you know, before when Lance, you've seen the stream of information, you're mm -hmm. able to feel it. Sure. Um, when I say I create no time, it's because this wheel prevents the incarnation of time that's a social agreement from functioning with my thought patterns. So when you uh, communicate, if I understand correctly, when everything's in balance, it's like a wheel. There's tension going both ways, but as the bicycle moves cleanly, it's very easy to stay on balance. Correct. And so, or ice skating is another way. Ice to skating, right? You stay yeah. in balance, right? So, are you a referee? No, I'm a presenter. So you're not actively involved in saying time out. You've done something wrong. Correct. And so, if someone who was serving the dark, so to speak, or service to self. Could they ask you a question? And would you? And they have. And what is would your obligation? I, I answer that as long as that person isn't aggressive and isn't in my energy field and has a level of respect. And and how? So would someone? Could someone say that you are a fully enlightened being? I'm a human being like everyone else, with with standard issues like every other human being in the system of domination and control. Are you an ascended master? No. Are you enlightened? I'm enlightened as everyone else is that's taken the time to master a skill. Don't, don't you have, though, with access to the full Akashic Record, isn't, isn't that unusual that most people, or nobody has access as you do, so that would, I mean, when we talk about information, if you have all the books and you can access all the concepts, you basically have an open book test that you could score an A-plus on every time. Does that mean you're conscious or, or enlightened, so to speak? No, A-plus doesn't mean anything. Using the sacred neutral 
reading skill to pass a test wouldn't wouldn't function in it. You'd be still turning over, turning over. I understand the the breadth of your question and the, the whole the whole width of it, and to give it that linguistical answer, that's a it's a challenge, because we have so many things that limit how we can function. You know, to be an enlightened being is a definition in a dictionary that has an entire light worker industry's intuition added to it and things added to it. Mm -hmm. So, enlightened, this is the way everyone's supposed to be. Okay? There's supposed to be matrix intelligences available at our thoughts distance. If we needed the Akashic Record, it would read it for us. So everyone can access the Akashic? Absolutely everyone can do that. Not only you. You can make a, a, a medium to do it. To remain in the sacred neutral, though, is the path to get there. For your job or for everyone? For anyone that wants to read the Akashic Record. And the purpose of reading the record would be to gather their spiritual contracts. It would be like section three of the handbook or section two of the handbook, how to read your contracts. Oh, contra okay. So that it's part, it's basically, do you understand the rules for the game that's being played? I understand the rules very, 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 very good. And at times too much because I can read the Akashic record of the rules. And but for me, I would use the record as a way of understanding the rules and the possibilities and how other people have used or played the game and used like a biography. You watch Correct. other people and so you're giving a biographies of different pieces of what's happened. Mm -hmm. Like a story synopsis. Correct. So it's really not the end, it, to be, to have your a grasp of the Akashic Record is not necessarily the end result of my aspiration as a soul. Correct. Although, ultimately, as I grow as a soul, I may gather more information and wisdom. Correct. And use it as a regular tool as you would use a hammer or a cell phone. It's like a resource. It's like Correct. It's the galactic Google. Correct. Galactic search engine, whatever, right. Google, whatever you want to call it. Okay. In, in my soul's incarnation, I, I'm so familiar with the drama from all of my past lives mm -hmm. of living in every soul family and understanding the factions within factions of the soul families, all of this makes sense to me and I'm able to put the paradoxal puzzle together. Mm -hmm. That's what makes the special human me, because that's you put these puzzles in front of me, I put them together. And how do you do that? I mean, that's, you're, you're, that's you're human... instinct. That's okay. on instinct. I mean, I, I, I can look at a TV broadcast and see the 29 layers of control behind it. How do you stay in this reality when you have 29 other realities? I've got other realities beyond that that, oh. that keep me anchored here. Um, there's a joke I make. It's beer, pizza, and sex that keeps everyone here. Or that's what, what keeps bringing people back. But on a more serious note, I have so many people trying to communicate to me in any given day three to four hundred easy in a given day like by phone or by f I don't carry a cell phone um, because it never stops ringing um, the number gets passed around until till finally I just need a new phone I gave up a phone two years ago um, simply because the energy from it was causing me horrible headaches um, and affecting me in other ways on a psychic level mm -hmm. um, as we've experienced in a previous episode right um, I like being here. I like doing what I'm doing. Interesting. So the reason I asked is because um, I think there's a tradition on earth of oracles mm -hmm. and people go to the oracles for the answer, mm -hmm. which in itself, from my perspective, um, takes you off the path of self-knowledge because you're giving someone else the power of, of your own discovery. Mm -hmm. Not that we shouldn't, in my opinion, connect to community to source truth, because that journey of solving the puzzle means like a scavenger hunt, you're checking with different sources. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, you wouldn't have the answer for me. And if you truly were an oracle of a high level, you would never give me the answer because 
it's inside, right? Exactly. It's inside. So your job is not to answer everyone's question about how do I get there. It's more about, so what part of the rules or what part of the history are you unclear about um, that's distracted you or got you entangled? As you, as you talked about contracts that bind us accidentally or deliberately mm -hmm. into agreements that limit our ability to grow in consciousness. Exactly. That's a very well well put. How, how would I explain that to someone that only wants to know um, the trivial stuff? How do I beat this? Why, what's my right and true path? Mm -hmm. That's for you to do that. You're a sovereign entity. I'm a sacred neutral perspective entity. I don't viol violate your sovereign free will in any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. So discernment. Yeah, absolute discernment. And in my readings, um, there are things that I can't say. I mean, there's a separation between what's an Akashic Record reading and what's a Psychic reading, but for me, they're one and the same, and I can use the skills at will. Mm -hmm. So what makes me different is I can connect the patterns that in previous lifetimes that this lifetime is dealing with. I've seen these patterns over and over For again. a human being? Or for a human being. Okay. Or for a, a, an off-world species, too. I do many readings for off-world species. How, it, how do you do that? Just look at them. <laughs> so Speak I in couldn't. Soul language. I, yeah. I don't have that ability. Mm -hmm. At least I don't think I do. But you could have a conversation with another being in another dimension. And I've done and it frequently. Frequently. How do they just ring you up? I mean, they don't have Skype there. How do they? It's a it's a psychic communication network. Okay. And how you gate the you're billions of other beings that want to access? You're in collectives. You. Okay. And collectives hold space, and then all of the others in the collectives can get into that space, but only function through the main collective that's active. Like, comes to a point. Comes to a point. So, if I need to communicate, there's 1,200 options up there, but if I need a single point of contact to follow down, down the chain, mm -hmm. that's my single point of contact, even though I know there's thousands beyond them, still fully aware of exactly my communications with the single point of contact. Because mm. it's a full collective. So, in a sense, it's easier to work with the, the non-human because they line up in queue. Yep. And they're very polite and, and you basically... Mm -hmm. Next, next number 29. Exactly. Uh, whereas the human beings, there's a lot. And they forget a lot. And they, they don't retain it, so they don't use their iPhones to record no. their... So they That's get direct access, but at the same time, it's not used always effectively. You've seen people put to sleep from, or the energy that's come out in the right. fires. Sure. You know, when you turn that, that field of energy on, people's natural defensive systems turn on, like going to sleep or TMI. getting jittery. Too much information. Too much information. Or go to sleep. That's it. Which we see on a larger society when mm -hmm. there's a topic that's just too, too sensitive for them to even engage in, and they become almost combative, right? Mm -hmm. They become angry. Or the opposite, sleep. Or sleep, and just don't. Want, they just don't see it. They it just—it's very there, but they can't see. And it. that's why I speak in layers, and layers, and layers, and layers. And you know, some of those interviews may be a little jumpy, but everyone's realizing by now that if you listen to the first three Walking Energy shows or the first seven shows that we recorded, it's so layered that you have to literally get to an understanding that everything that I'm, I'm speaking there is a layer to the next layer to the next layer and I'm barely getting 20% into it. Hmm. That's how deep it can go. And it requires people to ask questions that are that are intricate questions. The, the Akrashic records have been in me for as long as I can remember. Guess what? I'm tired of asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> You've asked all your I've questions. I've asked all my questions. You've gone to the library and checked it out. I'm like, what do you want to know? What do you want? <laughs> so is, is your contract, so to speak, just this lifetime, if you will? Or you've talked about the event, you've talked about dream time shifting. How is that role going to go past? My particular role will, will go into that of a healer. Um, are you and already a healer? I'm already a healer. I do oh. healings frequently, um, several days a, a month. Is that part of the job description of a it's, galactic historian? No, it's what I did to maintain the sacred neutral. It's the skill set that I wanted in my lifetime, that I wanted to be a galactic historian, that people would also know me as a healer and as a teacher. 
So that was your thinking? That then? was my thinking. Okay. That's how I'd maintain a life in a world of polarity. And the groundedness in terms of Correct. the humility that's needed to stay in the safe and neutral. Exactly. Because I would think that if you had access to all information, um, that it would be very hard for you to not think, you know, I'm smarter than everyone else here. And you could be very wealthy, you could be very powerful. I, I would think that you would be courted by everyone because you have the keys to knowledge, which everyone seeks. That's the thing. I learned a long time ago you don't need to know everything. And then there's a point you realize, in this dimension, you can't know everything. It's infinite. It's infinite. And you just go on lock. Exactly. Like <laughs> <laughs> in, in the cosmic lock. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I think that I think this is a. Um, I'd like to talk about discernment in the next segment. Okay. Because um, I think that's the next step. And now that we have access to to the akashic record um, in this day and time, which is quite mm -hmm. special, and you are now becoming more public mm -hmm. globally. Granted, you speak English, but um, we, I think you're going to transcribe all of these uh, recordings into multiple English, languages. multiple languages, and Google, so that anyone can go through that um, and and understand the concepts of it. Um, so I do have something to address sure. a little in discernment when we're here right now. I get people that come to me that want to read be able to read the Akashic records, and they come with these specific questions. You know, this island here, this thing here. And you get other ones that just don't know how to use the tool. And I understand I'm the presenter, and the translation that I'm creating from it is maintaining the sacred neutral and in honoring the Akashic Record. That doesn't mean the person that's understanding it is misunderstanding it. So the difficultness of the job in answering trivial questions to one person is a giant question to me. Because you you have you have to answer precisely. Exactly. You can't just go. We well, really don't need to know that. So I'm going to give you kind of a shortcut answer, because yeah. that doesn't honor the contract of giving the answer, the most precise answer that you're capable of, and what the person is capable of too. So you do size it. Well, you match it. The to person that could ask the question could be have been psychically influenced to ask a question. Oh. And if I answer a question that is beyond that person's comprehension with a linguistics that could reach them, I would violate their free will and I would call that psychic vomit. So and there are many people that do that within, within the light worker industry. They're not Give speaking them too to much. them. Right. They're speaking at them. Right. And so they really haven't provided a service, if you will. And, and for you to feel good about your service, mm -hmm. um, you want to make sure the answers match to the ability to receive so and that's why the layers i mean if if you send and they can't receive no communications occur correct i think that's called cognitive dissonance so mm -hmm. you're not really helping that person and you wasted your time in providing them with the insight they've requested mm -hmm. exactly okay. that's been interesting so we'll conclude this part 14 and we will move on in the next episode to talk about discernment thank you thank you welcome back this is episode 15, 15. Uh, with the Galactic Historian, Andrew Bartzitz. What a great last name. Thank you. <laughs> it's Greek. It's Greek. 100% Greek. 100% Greek. Yep. Dad from Corinth, uh, mother from Patras. Do you speak Greek? No. That wasn't a primary thing in my family at that, at that point in time, doing the Greek classes. Though I was an altar boy for uh, St. Constantine and Helen in Cleveland, Ohio. So you were raised here, but your parents came from Greece? Or? They were both born in Greece during the war, correct. So they're fluent in, in, in Greek. English? In Greek, yes. In Greek, both. You can't channel that from the coffee record? Um, I can't translate it. It's, it's different. Engl human 3D languages are so different. Um, they're designed to limit. Even the Greek language is designed to limit. Though the ancient Greek isn't because it has so many other symbologies behind it. Many of those teachings have been lost, so the the record doesn't truly give the inspiration to speak it unless you've had a past life with it. I've had other past lives in Greek. In Greek, um, the languages that I function with uh, are more on a soul level or a galactic level. Mm -hmm. So you don't speak in tongues? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's one person's definition of it, but uh, you've heard me I have. speak many times. So Is that soul language? or? 
it, it could be a species identified language, but I'm speaking it, and my throat chakra is able to telepathically trans translate it, so so it's auditory. So if I asked you to identify this, what would it be in in that language? She o di katata pu pa ni ka, she u na i ka pa ta pu ka ni na che o te ke u ushne he i ka mahaka u. In English, that would be what? The stone is a dream stone, and it has an energy field. And I was counting the different numbers, mm. and then describing that certain points create a bigger energy field. A dream stone. What is that? This particular stone. We look at. We got it here in Mount Shasta. Mm -hmm. It is a dream stone. It's a crystal that came from a meteorite, and uh, the, these crystals grew inside the meteorite under pressure. And when the meteorite crashed here, it left giant rock samples, and these survived the crash. Or they're seeded here from another world into deep into the ground, which is frequent. We we get people seeding crystalline structures in the ground, encased in a local bubble of reality that is the old planet that it came from so other things like that can be naturally manufactured so you've talked quite a bit about dream times in our mm -hmm. past episodes this this crystal then brings a resonance that allows people to maintain dream access or how it, it, it aids dream access because of the points Okay, you got all the, this. This creates an omnidirectional field. So not just one, but the way they all work together. Create an omnidirectional. As a community field. that oh, correct, oh. and then each individual has an omnidirectional field that ultimately determines how big and how wide the other is. So if I touch this crystal, I change the omnidirectional field. If I touch this one, or I go like this, I change the omnidirectional field. If you were to put this on your heart and try to go to sleep, the omnidirectional field of your heart is changed by the omnidirectional field of this. Hmm. Okay, and as a dream on a dream level, how do I put this? Your intentions take you to the dream source you, you're doing. Hmm. This has the out of world experience, the separate of the matrix, so it makes it very easy or a, a simpler process to tune into the earth consciousness of dream. Because that's where we dream in Earth consciousness. So I, we were going to talk about discernment this episode, but you have brought up a really interesting question, and that is, what's the difference between dream time or dream reality and the astral planes? Big difference, very very big difference. In the astral planes, you have a lot more negativity that can exist there. Mm -hmm. In the dream time realms, that are ancestral realms, there is no negativity. They're there out of true love. Um, the astral cities have boundaries in them that allow true love to exist there. And then there are wild zones around it where there are no rules. When you set up something in the astral world as a function, like the astral or etheric satellites, the satellite grids, they're physically not seen, but they're on the spiritual side. And they have a local reality bubble around them that keeps them protected. And then there's blank spaces of no protection. So entities can free roam there. Think of that as the most outer, outer, outer layer of Earth's magnetic sphere. And then the astral layer is that first 20 miles of it. So whatever can exist within the space between atoms is in the astral world there. So it's like the Wild West. Yes. In the astral planes. Correct. Whereas the dream reality is very focused, very loving and part of Earth's sentience. So if I had a, you talked about having soul groups, um, or actually, so dream realities relate to a planet, or to groups, or both? Groups who create places inside a planet's field of energy that's dedicated for dream time. So it's another creative space yes. that a soul group would create that they could decide the rules with. Correct. Could they be... Um, could they be horrific places with a soul group that had, quote, fallen or was very dark? Um, that's a really good question. In the old days, there were negative places in the dream realm that served a purpose for dealing with the destructions of local realities mm -hmm. because it was easy to snatch someone 
in a local reality you're about to conquer and bring them into this horrible realm and torture and abuse them there and then not have to get the karma for it. So many of those were taken out in about the 600 AD mark um, where there are trillions of Dreamtime warriors just ascended onto Earth's astral realm and Dreamtime realm and just basically got out the weed whacker and started clearing all the paths and putting the lights up. Okay, so now are all dream realities, is there a rule they have to be in love and light? And... No, not all love and light. Some are education realms, so the rules are different and you have to go through the experience even though the experience isn't ultimately going to harm you. Like a school of hard knocks. Correct. And so um, are these dream realities something that that I create or are ones that I am given? Well, in the ancestral realms, your ancestors were the original consciousness explorers. And they are the ones that set up the original space. Even though they may not even be living on Earth and any other pieces, parts may be completely somewhere else. Um, they set up the space and Earth holds the space for that DNA lineage. Your DNA gives you the key to the door to get in. Unique to this body or to my, uh, your my progression? Soul, my soul. Your soul family and ancestors of soul family. So anybody that's been in a DNA lineage of your soul family, soul families may choose six DNA lineages, 12, 22, mm -hmm. but all of that number would be access to their ancestral realm. In so, dream, time, in dream, in dream time. time. Correct. So my soul lineage, and that would be all lives that were lived by avatars of my soul and the group of souls quote, called mm -hmm. the soul family. Correct. And how many are in a soul family? It greatly differs. You can have a soul family of two until they decide to have a, a lineage. Does it always start with one? Mm, no, it always starts with two. Is that you like have to have an flame? elder. An okay. elder. Those flame. are the elders. The twin flame has been mistaken. I actually, we talked about that with Lance, Lance too. That the, the love and light community has really mistaken that's its actual purpose. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a split of a soul when... when no. Uh, that's misunderstood. No, it's misunderstood. Oh. A soul can split itself in two, incarnate on a planet, and then come together and have a child, and then that child creates the soul lineage with the two parts of itself as the elder. Mm -hmm. This is where the love and light industry made their mistake. That's your twin flame, yes, and it's a male and female, but that's not what the vast majority of soul families are made of. That's extremely rare that some entity breeds with itself to bring another piece out like that. That's something that the Cabal does through forced incarnation. Mm. Okay? On the other side, when two, soul, two souls get together and saying, I'm ending all soul contracts with other soul families, and I'm starting my very own, all of those other contracts are ended, and then those two come together and create a contract to make a soul family with a theme. Like a partnership. Like a partnership, yep. And they're the elders, they are the starting elders of that. And whoever they in, allow to incarnate into that soul family through whatever DNA lineages they choose are a part of that theme that creates lineage, that creates history, that creates an impact into reality. So it's kind of like forming a company. Some are not-for-profit, some are for-profit. Yep, it and, can be broken down that way. And the multidimensional beings are more of the for-profit. Correct. Whereas most others are not for profit. Yeah, for service for others. For service for others. So, uh, what's the range of soul group sizes that are here on Earth? Um, a lot of them have been broken down into groups of 8, 12, 16. Um, there are quite a few out there with several hundred, and then those out, a few out there with thousands. Um, Is that an old group when you say a thousand? Not necessarily old. You could have a lucky young soul that just got into the soul family because there was a, an issue, uh -huh. and they have, they have it. And then on other situations, they could be very, very, very old and, and have virtually nothing. This is a fascinating concept. So it's like a club. Yep. And the club may recruit new members mm -hmm. if they need to. Um, so a free agent, so to speak. Or if there's one or two and they decide they, they want to join with the other club, mm -hmm. the soul group. Um, and the soul group grows based on, how do they grow? By recruiting the members? Expansion of consciousness within the theme. Is that the monad? That diet? would be like the monad, yes, if you're the seven ray readers, the first three. 
Yes. So it would be one, ray two, ray three. Yeah. So the soul then is splitting into multiple aspects of itself. Correct. Okay. So that so that when you have an eight, that's eight different versions, or let's say one divided into eight. So they have eight times the ability to experience and grow. Correct. And so splitting into eight, thirteen, really is not important because theoretically the one could do the same work. Correct. But with having more avatars, well, I'm just making it. Mm -hmm. So as you have more souls, then theoretically you could have more avatars? Correct. Avatars within your soul family lineage that serve purpose to the lineage, like those that hold spiritual cords of equity, where let's say the two elders are going to go out on a consciousness exploration adventure and going to be gone 10,000 years you would set up multiple, many people within the soul family would set up multiple aspects to be an oversoul seer and one that can read the contracts from the very beginning of the theme and use the earth sentience as the ultimate equity to determine if the theme has been broken or if the particular situation of contract removal is valid. Or is been wrote written with um, you know scams behind it. So if I'm tracking this, um, uh, a couple members of the soul group go out on a journey and they're not going to come back for some time, mm -hmm. and they they're measured on their success based on these contracts they've agreed to, and those contracts are with the soul group or with God or who the contracts the, with the soul family. Oh, so, so they, they're saying if you go out and achieve your, your, your mission, your hero's journey, so to speak, mm -hmm. and you come back, then you'll receive more energy from the whole. And who's the whole? Um, the whole soul family that's expanding through their highest consciousness. Um, it, it also applies when the whole soul family's on earth, at times only one or two members of the soul family can fully access their higher consciousness mm -hmm. and then they can share that experience with the other soul family and in the situation that we're in the system of domination control totally separated us on the soul family level so we don't have that completion so when soul families come together there's this rapid raise of consciousness because you're all fully sharing at that moment even mm -hmm. though you're subconsciously doing it mm -hmm. and as soul family go grows apart um, one may be in high consciousness and can just share that with the others. Mm -hmm. Or if you have two doing, you share with the others, the whole grows brighter and brighter and brighter. And so this concept of the soul family or the soul becoming more wealthy, I like that term you used, I think, in walking energy, these very wealthy souls. Mm -hmm. I never thought of that, but really energy is... Is wealth. Is wealth. And everything that you look around here is related to the sun. Correct. It's been converted into something that we use to measure in terms of value. But energy allows you to do more things mm -hmm. in the universe and experience and grow as well. Mm -hmm. So how do you become more wealthy in the universe? Knowledge, experience. So knowledge is wealth? Knowledge is currency. Experience is wealth. So there's no substitute for swinging the axe. Correct. You can't hire someone to do that for you. Nope. So these multidimensional beings that you've talked about, they, they've they earned their wealth. Absolutely. And with that, they probably, like very smart people here on Earth, believe that they're probably better than most, and they can probably do things, and therefore they have more rights. Correct. And that they will take your rights away because you're not smart as they. Correct. And you have no way to comprehend how deep their game goes. Because they're so brilliant that you, you don't even realize what's going on. Right. But thankfully, as you've shared, there are some referees and the prime creator wants mm -hmm. to maintain the balance. And so when they start breaking the rules and the prime creator is aware of it, mm -hmm. they, they get ejected they from the game. They get ejected, time out, and then potentially recycled. Right. Or walk-ins taken over. But the... Multidimensional being, how would they have a walk-in? I mean, their consciousness, how does that work? That's the crazy part. <laughs> <laughs> when you make a sovereign free will version of yourself, uh -huh. there are limitations to your overmind consciousness. So you can put a walk-in in who's a psychic, who can understand... Well, back it up a second. The multidimensional beings have other species that are part of the defense and, and, and quarantine here 
that use high-powered computers, the highest artificial intelligence, of one vessel, which would be enough to predict, I mean, it's, hard, it's indescribable how powerful that artificial, artificial intelligence. It would take 20 capital, the best Pleiadian artificial intelligences to understand one multidimensional being as a bar graph to create the data. That's a lot That's of smarts. That's how, how much it is. When we try to look at them, they're not even a being. The walk-in can come in and hold all the contracts and basically he's just covering all the bases of what the being looks like, looks for on his checklist. So, so these avatars aren't going to operate from this multidimensional being's direction, so to speak. Right. So as much as they want to go left, it goes right. Correct. And so it, they kind of, they're, they're like trying to go this direction, they're getting pushed this direction. Mm -hmm. And so once things are out of harm's way, then they, they're free to roam, so to, to roam speak. back again. And so the question I think you asked before has been, is the service to self qualify for, you know, extraordinary abilities? The abilities. So granted you broke the rules, but it's kind of like Star Trek with Captain Kirk where he, he changed the rules. The, in the Kobayashi Maru. Right. He changed the rules. Like, he still won. Right, he changed he the still rules. won, but he, you know, there was nothing that said that you can't break the rules. So somewhat of a metaphor for the multidimensional being. Exactly. Kind of a paradox. We're in a free world universe. So rules are meant to be broken in a free world universe. Or no one told you they could be broken. Until you used their free will to break them. Or you asked, can I break the rules? Yeah. Exactly. If not said, then interesting. So back to the soul group. Um, and you talked about them being one, two, are they generally in multiples of doubles? No, they can, you can have souls that would leave it and give it at odd numbers. So there's no ma individual math that's for soul family. Though some groups use threes, nines, but that's the theme that they go. They come in pods. I think I've heard yeah. the group of nine, a channel from the yeah. group of nine, so... One soul. And that would be that would be a soul group. That would be a telepathic communication group that's using mm, psychic technology to maintain a stream contact with an individual. Um, I do group communications like that. I just don't present it in that type of format. Mm -hmm. So you talked about earlier that these that what we're trying to do is bring these soul families back together, and that when they came into the incarnation grade, they were divided up. Correct. purposely so that they wouldn't become a cohesive, powerful group mm -hmm. and that as a result they've been blocked well as a result they haven't been able to really move forward and then they've also been blocked as a group from graduating. Correct. And becoming, moving off and then using that energy and wisdom to go do more things. Correct. Have we become more powerful even though we've been stuck here, gathered more knowledge and wisdom or have we been stunted? I'll use a metaphor. A, a baseball metaphor. Mm -hmm. um, you have a bullpen, and that's all your pitchers. And if you know you're going to be going against two left-handed batters, and you've got two pitchers that can throw okay to left-handed batters, you pull those guys out instead of the ones that can't pitch. So the metaphor. I mean, I guess it's. it's so we're not uh, we're not stunted. Just we learn something different. Right. So ultimately, everyone that's been the incarnation grid, this is a very unique experience. Yes. And so that in itself has a wisdom that's that's uncomparable unless you're in it of the whole of the whole creation. So you could argue that 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 wisdom is quite valuable. Correct. Even though we've been grumpy about it. Yeah. We there are learned. others that look at us as lotto winners. Like we got to be in the most ultimate game, mm -hmm. and that we didn't expect it, but we won the lottery, right? Mm -hmm. In terms of wealth. Yep. In terms of soul wealth. So earlier you also talked about that we're bringing these soul families together, hence what you're trying to do, and creating events. How do soul families come together? I, I mean, if they, they naturally come together. I mean, when you when you make contracts, you, you, the if there were no, if say let's say that if there were no system of domination and control in the disunity world we had right now, right? It's a say it got turned off. Soul family would just naturally migrate to each other. Mm -hmm. It's just natural. That's the way we're, we're meant to be on this world. 
like you, you, you have a vine that's got grapes on it and each has got a bunch of grapes, they all naturally, and you have a separate vine and a separate and a separate, and each one's the line, they all line up to the pods that they're supposed to be in. So everything's connected. Yes. So Through I, the sentience of Earth, through your dream time, and that's how you all just know where to go. So you don't get steered off path. Correct. So theoretically, if you're a soul group of eight and you have eight avatars, do we have eight avatars on Earth um, in, incarnated, or would you only have... Most people come with one avatar on Earth, and several dozen pieces, parts, off-world, and maybe a few avatars off-world. So if, but there's a, always a central avatar, and the central avatar at times can divide all its sentience equally among all sovereign pieces or sovereign avatars. And when he does that, he becomes a hive. He or she becomes a hive mind, and can have even more pieces, parts with contracts, feeding the hive mind, which is feeding the all as the higher self. But here on Earth, if we had, I was part of a group of eight, for example, then I would assume that there are eight incarnated humans here on this planet. Mm -hmm. And that the goal in this particular existence would be for us to physically know each other, come in contact? To have contract resolution between you. First grade teacher, first lover, love of your life. Yeah, they're there to be to ex fulfill an experience. We, we've agreed to come and help each other fulfill experience. Could be my angry wife. Yep. It could be my my really nice uncle, and, and so on. Crappy boss. Whatever. Crappy boss. Right. Yeah. It's really going to teach me. So as we move into this event and, and after that, will these these people um, reunite? Yes. And will they? And so, do they need to physically be in proximity to each other? Like, do I have to go? Some will meet in dream time. Oh my God, where have you been? I haven't seen you forever. In dream time, but not this And then the dream will end, and they'll wake up, and they'll meet them the next day. So, it, it, they're all going to come together. Correct. So, I'm just going to say this a couple times, because it seems important, that if there were eight in my group, and those people were in ages that still ranged that they were physically alive, whether they were five or eighty-one, that we would come together eventually in coexistence in our community, like in a drum circle or a school or... Synchronicity would bring you together and allow... The, the Earth will allow the separations of densities and soul families to function through synchronicity. Unquestionable magic in front of you. That's exciting. Yes. We've okay. seen it here at the event. We have, but I guess I'm not yeah. trusting it. Exactly. So it like... happens to you 35 times in a week. At that point, you can't deny it. I guess it's kind of like the word soul family is used so loosely. Exactly. Like twin flame, you know, mm -hmm. after like, whatever, soul family, like mm -hmm. we're all family, right? Mm -hmm. But to say that there are eight beings that have done this incarnation things, mm -hmm. and you'd assume, well, maybe they're my family, well, there's maybe one person in my family that's mm -hmm. on that team. Correct. And coming together so we all consciously know that we're a soul family, and that we're now graduating. Correct. That, I mean, and we all know we're graduating, and then we're, would we be helping each other? Yes. In that final step? Yes. And that would be making sure that we all created these dream realities and for dream us together. Or for your ancestors. And what does that mean for our ancestors? If you decided to make a soul family lineage that would take on after you decided to leave. Oh, I see. Okay, in terms yeah. of the next phase. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's been 25 minutes. Okay. And we probably need to, like, ponder that. I know I do. <laughs> it's been just rich, very rich. Thank you, Andrew. I'm David Waterfall, and I'm with Andrew Bartsitz, and we are talking about real things that affect you, the real people, and about how we're going to move forward in creating a new reality for Earth. So thank you. Thank you. Jesus was able to help organize that. Wow. Because there were individual families that had individual parts, and when he came there as his teacher, he began healing people in unity, as began people in unity, they all break and brand their crystal to the to the table. Oh. And that's ultimately why the Vatican was very harmful to the Irish people. Oh. Because it was looking for those people that held those objects. So that they could erase them or bring them back into the Vatican. And, and they did accomplish that. Correct. 
uh, Veronica Keene talks a lot about that. Did you? Have, I've interviewed have, Veronica. Have, yes, she's isn't she a wonderful, wonderful person? Wonderful, wonderful. And I love her uh, channeling of Montague. Yes. And another person, I just adore her Montague's words <laughs> to Veronica, and um, she's doing quite quite a bit of wonderful work on yes, the planet she's doing as good well. Work. And Michael Tessarian is another one that's mm -hmm. come out with the uh, origins of uh, the Irish origins of uh, yes, yeah, and. Uh, uh, that's another wonderful source of, of information. Of course, this is this is a much easier to just tap into the Akashic records. Okay, so getting back to Jesus, um, so he was a basically was he one of the highest uh, light beings? Uh, the, no, not necessarily. There are others. That He's the one that got spun. Ah, <laughs> Let's think of political spin factor. Okay, he's he was an ace. He was a We'll just call it a royal flush that was played. Okay. And then somebody else played a royal flush on the spin game afterwards. Oh, yeah, this is what it feels like. Because he got co-opted. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He was there. He was real. He changed people locally for two generations. Fourteen generations later, it doesn't matter what he said or what he did. Right. Right. Because they that's wrote him 400 all years later. Yeah. And that's what um, an example of time manipulation. Correct. And also uh, uh, changing texts. I, I, yeah, changing translations, uh, right, for the next generations, which is a, one of the tricks that uh, yep. one of many, many that's being played on us. <laughs> okay, changing and, our history as they see fit. Right, right, exactly. And us never knowing it was changed because they took all our oral traditions. Right, and we have no clue really about the uh, the star families that we come from because that is so suppressed. That information is really, uh, you know, that's been uh, uh, marginalized. Correct. So, uh, did Jesus ever have a relationship? Yes, and children. And children. Yes. What happened to the children? Uh, Broken into 32 family lineages spread among the kings and queens of, of Europe. That's okay. why they're contract, contract holders for the system of domination and control. Oh. And that's why his bloodline was so important to dominate. Oh. Because if any others did manifest within his bloodline, they wanted to make sure that there was the sole family that was in there was controlled. Right. Thus, right. that's why you have a queen now who's the sole contract holder for the monetary value system of exchange. Huh. That's what the Queen of England does. Wow. She holds all those soul contracts. Wow. Therefore, she has to be a powerful and old soul and has to go through a remembering process. So what's going to happen with the royal families as the shift increases? Well, when you start taking away the spin, people will be real angry at them. But at the same time, many of them had no choice. They're just born into a life holding contracts that they have well, no way of understanding. Didn't they have a choice of being born into these? Maybe a thousand lifetimes ago. Oh, right. <laughs> and like the rest of us, they too have had to keep replaying their roles over and over. And yeah. so some of those are probably pretty weary. Yes even though they have all the keys and right. to the toys and everything else yeah. and they're tired of they know they can never defeat the controllers they have they've lost hope inside themselves therefore just play the game oh ah, right right um interesting so uh all right so all of his all of jesus lineages has been co-opted in come back this is part 11 of our galactic history I'm Lance White with Andrew Partsis. And um, one of the things that uh, came up for me during the break was the, uh, the numerous wars. Are those being planned out as part of the final chess moves or are some of that unexpected? The wars that are going on right now around the world, um, what's, the, what's the game plan with that? There are unexpected things happen. An example, the fruit vendor in Tunisia. Uh, he was an unexpected wave of rebellion, totally against the the entire system that was looking at our data and predicting us to do this, 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 or this. The the guy in Tunisia, he was a fruit vendor who said he had to pay, to pay taxes or pay, have some kind of license, and he set himself on fire in the, scare, in the square, which set off a whirlwind of stuff in Tunisia, Egypt, Afghanistan, all, all over the Middle East, you know, up into Syria. But that one fruit vendor, what was being protested was was uh, actually food issues, 
price mm -hmm. of food had tripled. Oh. The price mm -hmm. of olive oil had gone through the roof, and that's the staple of the staple for them. Yeah. The same thing in Egypt. Egypt was about the price of food. Mm. Okay? That's how out of touch they were. They had raised the price of food so much so people could no longer eat that were in middle-income jobs. Which is happening here in America. Yes. <clears throat> in fact, it's happening very rapidly. Mm -hmm. well, they're trying to take our water away from us and make it pay for it, too. Oh, right. They've already yeah. taken the air. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As for the, the, the wars, we see Tunisia. Tunisia fell. As Tunisia was rising, the main controller forces looked at this and said, this is going to this is gonna suck for us. <laughs> we have to do something quick. So they divested all of their assets out of Iraq and Afghanistan and put them in Tunisia so that they could co-op any rebellion move that was going to go because they knew it was going to spread. It goes to Egypt in the beginning and then you have the green movement in Iran. Egypt was still a little blip on the radar in Tahir Square. They had only been there like six or seven days. Uh, and then you have what's going on in the Green Revolution. The Green Revolution would be the two months before, would be before Christmas. Okay. The Green Revolution, they're in their, their run up to their election. Millions are out. They pull out the guns. They start killing people in the street. It's live on TV. So mm. that tells you that the government is going to put suppress rebellion. Right. That's the media outlook. This was actually shown here for a reason. Think of how many of the wars aren't shown to us. The war oh. in Turkey and Syria is going on now. Do they show that any day at all? No, no, no. But they showed the Green Revolution, the people getting killed in the streets for a reason. Was that to turn us against Iraq? That was fear. Ah, well, to of create course fear. Right. Of they course already divested all their forces out of Iraq. They realized they already lost. Now the tribes oh. wanted them. They wanted there, and they wanted prosecutions for their war criminals oh. on the American side. Plus oh. all the corruption and the fact that four and a half trillion dollars is missing from Reconstruction. <laughs> <laughs> what else is new on that? Okay. The bribery went to the highest levels there. Ah. So Iraq, Iraq was divested because they got all the technology they wanted out from under the ground. There's mm. all sorts of technology that they need. Afghanistan is a little different. There are actually vessels embedded in the mountains, mm -hmm. they're out of phase in the mountains that have been there for millions of years. And they're extremely val valuable vessels on the black market. Mm. Very valuable or the technology in them is so intense that it can increase the power of one faction a, a lot. Wow. And so do they know where these... Uh, you have to go search for them literally. It's like quite, quite on a low, low scale level. You have to be like actual psychic people in the spot to under this planet right. and understand what, what other service to universe entities are ready to step in and take the hardest job ever. Right. Which is to take over the contracts of people at the controller levels right. to end a system of domination and control that's been going on in a 52 million year time war history. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And a 38,000 year suppressed uh, ascension right. cycle. Yeah. So, um, uh, I just lost my train of thought. Uh, we were talking about the... Um, uh, the walk-ins. The walk-ins. So, so, that completely changes the, the whole the whole game. Correct. Because the, the walk-ins are the Council of Twelve. Correct. And, and the management system. Management system. system. Okay. And, and we the don't court know, system, the spiritual court system. Which is run by the Archons. Run by the Archons. And the Archons also manage what else? The control rooms. Ah. They have, they have their puppetry energy over the control room people. Okay, okay, so they don't have to manage the control rooms directly, they manage the people in them. Correct. And then the people in the control rooms manage the... People below them. Which... Are the bankers. Ah, okay, and then the next layer down below that... The bankers control the governments. Right, okay, and then... The governments got... run the strings of the thugs. Right, right, and then the mafia runs interference for all, all of them. them. Yeah. And the royals kind of hold the contracts so the system exists because there has to be contract holders for the system. Okay, right. So they're the they're the ones that hold the paper. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. They you own the world. <laughs> exactly. And then the Vatican holds the paper over the soul contracts. Uh, uh, people are in the baptized situation. Now the purpose of baptism is to keep the put soul you in that contract of tacit consent forever. So, getting baptized is not necessarily a good thing. That's where they seal the spirit from. Yes, but at the same time, there are people that are healed from healed from healed from baptism. Uh. 
And it, this is, again, to get to religion. There are good people in religion. Right. Religion right. is hijacked, and there are bad people in religion, thus the pedophilia organizations. But there, for religion to be what it is, there has to be good in it. Otherwise, nobody would have ever bought it. But what's to what extent the is the highest and the highest levels have to are be to government, which are separate of religion. Well, okay, all so right. The governing body of the of the the church, which is the Vatican, is a country that has people that have citizenships all over the world. So you'd see the duality of of the Vatican. It's a country that holds con the spiritual contracts of a religious and organization that's global. Mm and forcibly spreading and passively spreading mm -hmm. versus other religions that are forcibly and passively spreading also. Okay, like the Mormons. The and Mormons, the Buddhists. But so right, on, uh, any of them. They're all, yeah, promoted. any religion They're is... They're all promoted. Yeah, promoted, yeah. So there's no, there's no one better than another. Um, and then that brings us to the sacred texts that you said were all basically holographic documents that... Yep. And um, co-opted after or before their written. Right, it would have to because be. Because it's about passing the generations and allowing the generation to reinterpret based off of the predictive right. models they have. And if something goes wrong, they can fix it the next generation right. and print it the way they want it. Right, they just put just right. the, the 11th printing or whatever, or they right. just uh, erase it. Erase it. Erase it, and then you don't even know that what you're holding is a different version mm -hmm. because the old one doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Now, what about a... Uh, physical, gee, there's a lot of controversy about Jesus in his life and what he did and who he was and so on and so forth. Now, as I understand it, everything that manifests in the, at the metaphoric level has to also, or as above, ha also has to exist as below. So there has to be a physical manifestation of 12 disciples or 12 people, whether they're, you know, literal or not, and there has to be somebody that... understand how to pull the vessel out, because the, the vessel has a, a limited consciousness in it. Huh. Interesting, and uh, there must be numerous places in Egypt and devices all that are... All throughout the whole world. Well, right. Yes. All throughout the whole world. Right, right. So they, the, the dark hasn't discovered all these items. Nor has the light. Nor has the light. Right. But people purposely left those there so the future people would find them. Right, like the Dead Sea Scrolls, for instance? Correct. Okay, and uh, what was Area 51 about? Was that... Area 51 is where the time travel missions needed an anchor location so that they can go and get missions anytime they were in the time stream. So let's say you got put back 30 years. Okay. If you, you needed an update and didn't want to communicate to anything but something that has connection to the timeline you came from, you'd go to Area 51 with a special passcode which would take you to the time travel division. <laughs> wow. What else exists there? Everything we talked about. Right. All, um, because all these technologies all these are, are all... Yeah. But at the same time, a lot of their technologies were have been removed. They figured out a way how to get past their suppression fields and just teleport all the technology they wanted out. Where to where? The good guys took it out. Oh, oh, it oh. I got, I got it. So, mm -hmm. so in other words, the, the toys of the big boys are, are being... Taken away. Taken away. Israel has been hurt pretty bad that way. <clears throat> okay. Much of their multidimensional technology has been completely incapacitated. Ah. They still have tricks up their sleeve, but the stuff they expected to have until the end isn't there. Oh. Think of both knights and all your pawns are gone. Okay. That's the moon, that's, that's where, where Israel is right now. Wow. It does feel like they're on their last legs. You never know. But you know, right, you and know. they all reinvent Honestly, themselves. They all reinvent themselves. They come back somehow, they mm -hmm. come up with a new, or they have an ace in the sleeve. Exactly. You know, and, and Or a gun in their sleeve. <laughs> too many of those. Exactly. Um, so, the Syrian war. Yeah, yeah, what about that? All the wars that exist right now on our planet are meant to suppress the chakra energy that's below it. Oh. There are a cluster of womb chakras all throughout the Middle East called the Garden of Eden at one point in the Bible. Mm. With what it meant is there could be thousands of local realities within that zone that were all birthing new life that could be transported to a new blank acacia record planet. Mm -hmm. It was life that was meant to rapidly be created and then sent somewhere else. Mm. What's happening there now is war, so every time someone dies, they're instantly recycled back into the system of war. So you could die once and all of a sudden be forced to be a walk-in on somebody else who's dying. Whew. That could get pretty tiring. And that, that, is, that is what's suppressing the energy of the chakras okay. from waking up. 
those will be, these will be the first sets of chakras that wake up and begin to change the people on that in that area. And that's why there's war there. And that's why the rebellion started with a fruit vendor, because that was the first opening of the collection of those chakras. Hmm. So once that energy starts to circulate, the, it's, it seems like there's almost nothing that could stop it. Correct. Once a wild card is played. outside of the, the predictive models comes in. All the old models don't mean the same value. Right, and you, they can't keep up with them fast enough, no matter how much technology they have, Correct. to predict what's going to come next. Exactly. And so that kind of would level the, the playing field to some extent. It would put the neutrality people back in a place where they can create secrets that the light and the dark don't know about, uh, which can make the game play faster. Okay, all right. And once the game plays faster, you have to show more of your moves. Right, right. So the the, the neutrality people uh, are the ones that really step on the gas pedal. You're right, and those those are the who? walk-ins. The walk-ins. Okay. They're brought in by Prime Creator, his choice, because ah. he's scanned everyone that's on incarnates as a being that it represents, and many people have felt that they are that particular being, and that has to do with the God program, God programming, or you at one point were a sovereign piece of that entity ah, right. that chose to become part of earth consciousness instead of taking on a body or going to the astral world uh. it went total to service to earth and it's allowing its name and imagery of that other lifetime to go through time and then there will be future people that will look at that energy and recognize that at one point I was 25 degrees of separation, that person. Okay. 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 But you're not really that person. Right. Okay? Right. It's like right. saying my great-grandfather times 52, that I lived one life at time next to is, my, is, is me, but they're not. Right. Their, their energy is so powerful that it goes through the bloodlines. Right. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, what, do we, what do, can we find out about the actual person that lived? And and mm. those, you know, it was a real person. Okay. Um, he, I mean, the trivial stuff in the Bible, and then there's the more expansive stuff in the Bible. He wasn't on the cross. Okay, right. He I've always wasn't on the cross. I've always thought that. Um, trying to be a little delicate, because I know some of the audience out there is really connected to to some of these concepts. Yeah. Um, he wasn't tortured. Right. Okay. He was betrayed but not in the way that the Bible was, was stated. Okay. His betrayal was by other light beings, actually. Really? Other light beings who didn't want to see the bastardization of the teachings. Okay. So they said, you got to go. Huh. You got to go. So would We're they screwing be... up our system of light while the dark was still trying to win. So they, they said Jesus had to go? They made sure that it was not the right time for him to stay. Oh, interesting. Interesting. The light forces are not unified. Oh, right. That, right? That's pretty make clear. Make that clear. They are not that's unified. That's pretty clear. You can see that in the uh, New Age movement, and right. of course that's all been co-opted in the light worker. In, you Correct. Know, the fragment. Jesus was a real being that traveled right. the world and also traveled the stars. Okay. Uh, some say he went to Egypt for a lot of his esoteric training. And in the Himalayas, and Japan, oh, nice. and Australia, uh, wow. and Native America. Wow. Mesoamerica, yes. South America, Asia, all over. So he was able to travel anywhere. He used the Hollow Earth or Garth and Tooth Networks. Interesting. Interesting. Did he, in his journeys... There were many mystics in throughout the Middle East that knew how to use the tunnels. Okay. Okay. As okay. well as those in the Vatican, because there's Vatican-based tunnels also. Oh, right. And then there are maglev trains underneath... These are consciousness trains. Right? Oh, okay. There are, ma are okay. maglev trains, too, but this, these are actually tunnels that once you start traveling you go into no time and if you're going from one count to another it can take a a day instead of months okay okay good um so um he was also big in ireland too he did a lot jesus did a lot of work in ireland too i've heard that the Ar ireland is the center or the source of, of much of the uh uh, of much of what has come out spiritually that has been repressed yes because there was a massive dna <clears throat> how do i put this bank that was there 
It was the crystals that held the wisdom of all the DNA separate of the, of the wisdom of the domination and control. Oh, okay. The free earth system had powerful connections in the base fam soul family, so people were able to transmit code, the soul codes that I've been talking about, to these, these <clears throat> basically off-the-record recordings. Oh. So that someone would have access to it in the future. Okay. <clears throat>